Hey there guys, and welcome back to the Travis and Damien Podcast, episode 87. We're available on anchor.fm slash Travis Damien Podcast, along with Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many more. First, we're going to talk about the all-new PlayStation Plus launch games. Then we'll get into our recent activities, including LEGO Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga. Next, our spoiler discussion on Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Lastly, all of the news that has been going on within the past two weeks, including Starfield, She-Hulk, Ugly Sonic, and many more. So first up, I'd just want to apologize for last week's hiccup with the visual presentation on the youtube side uh, i decided to record my face cam not using my phone and instead with discord uh so apologies for that because i had to go see dr strange immediately after the podcast and i thought i would have time to render it uh but i ended up not even having a chance to render it so <laughs> Um, and also I was on the Jimmy M podcast, uh, episode 26. Uh, we did a little bit of catch up, sort of a throwback episode talking about our old YouTube channels and shit like that. So if you want to check that out, I'll have a link in the description below to that, but it is episode 26, uh, at the Jimmy M podcast. So, uh, you got any comments on that stuff, Damien? Uh, no, just, you know, it's pretty sick that, you know, you guys talk, I mean, you've been on YouTube forever <laughs> at this point. I <laughs> yeah, mean, I mean, this past week was my 10 year anniversary, so shit. Yeah. I mean, we've been, I like, we've been using it even before then, like, yeah. you know, like we've, we've been using <laughs> this website for a very long time. <laughs> uh, like my old channel, like is gone now, but I mm-hmm. made it in like 2008. So yeah, yeah. I've been here for a while. <laughs> we both have, we both have. Anyways, so first let's get into the all new PlayStation Plus games lineup. So, um, to I don't think anyone's surprised. Uh, lineup's kind of dog shit when it comes to uh, third-party titles. <laughs> yeah. Um, even even first-party titles to a certain extent. So, like, I think the PlayStation 4 and 5 games I thought were going to be good because it's, like, they have easy access to those games. Like, that's sort of, like, a no-brainer. But I know that a lot of the older stuff, for some reason, they're, like, very stingy of uh, putting them out there or whatever the case is. So, mm-hmm. uh, the full list of games is, is available on the PlayStation blog, but... Uh, for the PlayStation 4 games, uh, one game that really stood out to me was Gravity Rush, the remaster, yeah. because that game's a little expensive, I'm going to be honest. Like, if you want to get the physical version, you're going to be paying a uh, high dollar for it in North America just because it was released exclusively on Amazon. So that was kind of weird. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> the, uh, the sort of, like, classic titles that they put in there, you know, you got Ape Escape, you got Hot Shots Golf um and then for i guess the ps2 stuff you got like remasters of jack and daxter okay dark cloud so i th- i was excited at first right because in this blog it says oh we're gonna have the remasters we updated like graphics and frame rates and stuff and when i look at them all oh, the jack games and like uh, ape escape 2 and dark cloud that's cool mm-hmm. um but those were a very remastered you, you you could buy them now on ps4 and they're like dog shit <laughs> <laughs> like the jack the jack games that were like ported to PS4 like just look like shit there's a ton, like a ton of graphical issues and stuff so if these are literally just those versions like and you just paid a subscription for them i don't think that's going to be worth it like at all unless they're going to fix them if they fix them that's good but if not then yeah that's not worth it cuz i just heard nothing but bad things about the jack PS4 port so <laughs> mm-hmm. that's not good yeah, then we get to the PlayStation 3 games, which I think was one of the main concerns for yeah. us personally. I mean, like, for me, the infamous the infamous games are there, so that's cool. <laughs> um, all of them, actually, including the uh, sort of, like, little DLC game, Festival of Blood. Mm-hmm. Um, but the Ratchet & Clank games, there's, uh, you know, a, a few titles missing. Uh, there Tours was instructions. Yes, there. <laughs> that, is, that is a big notable one, because that is the first Ratchet & Clank game uh, to be featured on the console. But, you know, a lot of these spin-off titles are not there. But Into the into the nexus is there so that's pretty good and a crack of yeah. time which is probably the best game on the on the platform for the ps3 anyways for the series yeah <laughs> <laughs> and for the series um but yeah i think that you know when you have such a large library of games especially when it comes to playstation you're gonna miss a lot of titles obviously and i think that because you know like i'm kind of like defending them here but not really because like they own the games you know like there's ways for them to just like put it on there and whatever like maybe maybe i'm just being a, a little like too like sort of self-explanatory like just put them on their forehead kind of thing but yeah. you know like there should be easier ways to you know have these games especially for the playstation 3 because these games are just streaming yeah no i agree i mean here's the thing i know they said this was like a small list of the games that we're adding like apparently there's supposed to be a lot more i mean they mm-hmm. said it was supposed to be like 300 something um, and we, I don't think they showed any PSP games because those are apparently supposed to also be here. 
Um, so I'm hoping like the list is way better when the thing actually comes out. You know, that's the copium in me because I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I, I hope it's good. But, um, you know, I, I don't know if that's going to end up because why wouldn't they show their strongest stuff first? Right. Like you would show like maybe all the mascot platformers or like Metal Gear or, and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But like, you know, they haven't shown it. They're just showing us like things that were already on like there. And like, you know, PSD is still streaming, which kind of sucks, too. I mean, they already said that, but it still kind of hurts. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. It, 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 in terms of like their classic lineup, it does seem pretty weak. Um I, I think their first party stuff for the newer stuff like PS4 and PS5 games look a little better. Um but you get Miles, you get um Returnal, uh the Demon Souls remake. Like, those are pretty newer like games that came out like only two years ago. So I, I think that's yeah. pretty cool. But um for the most part I do think like the classic lineup is a bit weak. Not yeah, so mm-hmm. like definitely if you like shout out a, a crap ton of money for the PS5 because you're out of the buy resale and you're buying this subscription. This is pretty good, especially since because you're getting a lot of the launch window games, including Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut, oh, yeah. which, yeah. you know, like me personally, as, as a Sucker Punch fanboy, that game is fantastic and phenomenal. Yeah. Very um, good. But, you know, if you're looking at a lot of the classic titles such as us, I think we are definitely looking at those in particular because those games are very, very hard to sort of play in today's sort of, I guess, landscape if you don't have those consoles. So... Yeah, hopefully that they announce more classic titles. I think that that's what people really want from this sort of service, especially when it comes to the very highest tier of this new all new PlayStation Plus service. But yeah, I mean, it's not it's not the worst thing in the world, but like it obviously could be a lot, a lot better. I mean, it's kind of how I felt about like Nintendo, right? It's also mm-hmm. just like it's okay. <laughs> like <laughs> I, I don't know if like I, again, I'm gonna need the full list of games. Like if I'm ever gonna pay that like premium like plus subscription or whatever the hell the the you know for the classic games yeah like i'm gonna need to see like where's ratchet and clank i, I want all the ps2 ratchet and claims games please um some good psp games as well that'd be cool like daxter like i haven't played daxter in forever it'd be cool if that was mm-hmm. on there um and you know if you're a fan of ps1 games like it's still like i don't think spyro or crash are gonna be there i mean you don't really need them because you have insane trilogy and reignited but it'd still be cool to have them there like i don't know metal gear is also gonna be there like i don't know it's like a whole lot of like what ifs and stuff i mean we talked about this already about like the whole third party stuff and how it's gonna be yeah. really hard that again that's why the ps1 classic sucked because they had like no third party support on it um and you know playstation didn't start getting a lot of good first parties till like the ps2 era where like people started to like stick around and then by the ps3 they've had a bunch of things so um yeah i don't know we're gonna have to wait um uh, you know ps3 is still really lame that's streaming and tools destruction still isn't there for some reason <laughs> just yeah. put it on there I, I don't know why it's not there <laughs> but yeah, whatever. i don't know um one thing i noticed just looking at the uh i guess like ps3 games is that red uh, redemption's there but it's the undead nightmare sort of like dlc uh, yeah as the dlc yeah. I, i'm assuming it's because the game's way too goddamn big for streaming but um, they, they always say um it's like spaghetti code that's why rockstar never oh, yeah. recorded it apparently <laughs> that, that was always their excuse for it so uh, spaghetti code we can't we can't do much about it guys sorry yeah <laughs> um but also tokyo jungles there which i still remember as like a game that like jesse cox talked about like years and years ago like when it came out as like a ridiculous sort of game where you like play as animals and shit it's really uh, weird i think i know what you're talking about. yeah i used to watch co option <laughs> all the time yeah. yeah so um but yeah hopefully that they add more games obviously uh with the whole like you know th- we're bringing these classic games that were already remastered you know some of, some of those parts aren't so hot so maybe they'll fix them maybe they won't i doubt that they'll fix them to be honest just because normally when playstation uh remasters come out they don't really hot fix them no <laughs> unfortunately like- yeah, it sucks too because you know um, they did do a lot of remasters and ports during the PS3 days, but again, mm-hmm. P- that's like the worst console right now to like play anything on. So I'm really hoping we could just get these classic games like on a more modern console. Again, like Ratchet is a big one for me, but like Sly, like a better ports of Jack. Um, you know, th- that that's all I'm asking for really. <laughs> so just- yeah. Please, Sony, do it. <laughs> Look, if you if, if they put the Sly Collection and Sly Four on the PS3 streaming, I'm I'm buying it just to replay it. Like whatever. Yeah. Like I like I have the consoles and and I could do it myself. But like if I could play them on my PS5, then sure, why not? You know. I mean, yeah. Like, I just don't want. I have the big ass fat PS3, like the first model of it. I yeah. hate setting that thing up. So <laughs> just please let me get rid of that thing already. So yeah, I have the uh, the Super Slim because like my Slim yeah. like 
the some for some reason the goddamn disk drive like crapped out on me. So then yeah. I just like went to Plain Trade before it shut down. <laughs> I yeah, went to Plain Trade and just like bought a uh, a Super Slim just because I'm like, well, I've I don't want to go out of my way to get a PS3 if I could just get one locally, and then if something happens, I could always return it. So, right. you know, um, but yeah, there's that. So let's get into our recent activities. We'll save Lego Star Wars for last, so we could talk okay. about that a little more in depth. But um, I guess I'll go first because I. A lot of my stuff's pretty quick. So I saw Everything Everywhere All at Once. That is the movie where it's pretty much about, like, this woman who's having, like, a sort of, like, existential crisis in a sense. And yeah. she, in alternate universes, lives multiple lives. You know, it, it sort of breaks down the rules of how the sort of multiverse works and how uh, different versions of yourself happen and how you go into different universes and, and stuff like that. They, like, it's it's pretty ridiculous. Like, this this movie's crazy, but it's a lot of fun, and the way that they explain the rules is, like, pretty good, I would say, for a concept like this. And I really liked it. It does get a little confusing and sort of, like, what the hell's going on kind of thing. Right. Uh, but that's just, like, how the movie is, and that's just what the what the directors wanted this movie to be like i think their previous work um i forget exactly what it was but like daniel radcliffe was like a goddamn boat or something like he wasn't like talking <laughs> or, or some shit like he wasn't like moving his mouth i forget oh, exactly what the movie yeah. is called i could probably google it right now god damn it but, talking about uh, it. <laughs> but yeah um fuck anyways yeah that movie's great uh if it's still in theaters near you i would recommend go see it but if not, wait for it to uh, go on Blu-ray or whatever the case is, because uh, they that is like a fantastic movie, like a original concept that people have really gone out of their way to go to the movies and actually see. That isn't a Marvel movie, you know, like that's just sort of like how it is. Like people are going to the movies to see these big blockbusters and not for like something like this. That's like really cool and really unique and interesting. And by the way, that uh, that Daniel Radcliffe movie is called Swiss Army Knife um, okay. or, or Swiss Army Men fucking hell i'm so stupid yeah swiss army <laughs> man um but yeah anyways updating you on my anime says manga i've just been watching the seasonal stuff still you know komi can't communicate shikamori's not just a cutie spy family still really fucking good um and then for manga uh once again i am still reading through horimiya still a great slice of life finished volume 13 uh then a new one that i picked up just like on a whim because i knew that i knew that it was coming out this month it is uh kubo won't let me be invisible so you know me damien i know you know that i love these fucking like teasing manga oh, so like this is pretty much i know <laughs> it's pretty much what this shit is um but it's on shonen jump uh so it's pretty much about kubo who won't let this this guy in class be you know just like invisible just won't let him you know do his own thing you know be be that fly on the wall but she's the only 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 one that notices him and it's like sort of like obviously like exaggerated where like people like don't notice him like trying to like you know stand there and then people like bumping into it was like oh shit bro i didn't yeah, see you there on, and man. then you know <laughs> you know like on like straight up like automatic doors like when he steps up to them they don't go and it's like oh, oh okay but yeah i mean it's cute it's wholesome it's funny obviously like she likes him so you know but there you go <laughs> you know i'm gonna keep i'm gonna keep reading that when that comes out however often it comes out physically but yeah it's pretty much what i've been doing and most of my time has been dedicated to lego star wars so yeah, so, um, yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, I'll also wait <laughs> to talk about it. I don't know, that's right. <laughs> okay, okay. So, I mean, I haven't really been doing much, uh, like, because last week I had a friend come over and mm -hmm. I was just doing other things. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. but um, this week, I, you know, after playing Lego Star Wars, because I did that the week before, um, I decided, well, I, I was playing more Rogue Legacy too, but I kind of ready to talk. I haven't really made that much progress in it. I just kind of put it there because I played a little bit more of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can't, I can't really say too much yet, but... I was playing Lego Star Wars. I was in a big, like, platformer mood because, um, one, there's not so many games coming out right now. It's not until, like, June, the end of June, the new Fire Emblem game comes out. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, I have time to, like, work on some backlog stuff. And I feel like in a platformer mood. And, um, Spyro has always been on there. Like, I've been <laughs> meaning to play, like, Spyro ever since, like, Insane Trilogy or well, Reignited uh, Trilogy came out. Uh, I wanted to do it after Crash 4, but that didn't happen. And I wanted yeah. to do it, when, obviously, when it came out, but I just, I don't know about was I think it was, like, God of War or something came out. I can't remember. But, um, yeah, so now I'm finally, like, okay, I'm going to actually, like, play the series. Um, and I'm surprised I haven't yet, because I'm a big Asoniac simp, and you'd think mm -hmm. I would, like, play their first game. But I just never did. I don't know why. But, uh, yeah, I, I beat the first spy. It was really short. It's like, six hours, 100%. It. So, like, I did in, like, two days. Um, but, yeah, it was really good. Um, you know, I usually the first games are usually people call them the weakest. But I don't know. I kind of like the first games in some series because they're, like, the most pure in a sense. Like, I know people, yeah. like, 
people dunk on Crash 1 a lot because it's really hard and, like, just, like, oh, you just do the same thing. But I don't know. I kind of like it. Like, I actually didn't like Crash 3 that much because there was way too much variety in it. Yeah. I just prefer Crash 1 and 2. I know Spyro's even worse for that. I know, like, 3 gets pretty bad <laughs> with that. Um, but let's not talk about it. I'm not up to that yet. But um, Spyro 1 is basically, like, how Crash 1 was structured where you have three main levels per, like, hub world. And mm-hmm. then you have, like, a flying level and then, a like, a boss stage. It's not really a boss, though. You kind of just run to it and then that's it like the bosses in spyro one are pretty shit because they're not even bosses but mm-hmm. um, you know the levels are a ton of fun um a lot of things to collect um uh they're really sh- like not short but like really condensed because like you have your hub world and then you go to another level and then you have that world mm-hmm. um so it makes like collecting stuff like a lot easier instead of like these big open spaces like mario 64 or banjo and kazooie where it kind of feels like a pain in the ass to collect everything uh spyro is very manageable um even does it i didn't know this till the very end of the game which kind of sucks because it probably would have been useful uh if you like left click or not left click <laughs> if you click in the left <laughs> stick sorry if you click in the left stick uh sparks would like point to wherever gems you're missing which is very helpful. I didn't know that was a thing. Um, so if you just left like a gem somewhere in the stage and you're like going crazy trying to find it, like sparks would just point to it. I did not know that was a thing. But um, yeah, it's very good for like, you know, a PS1 like open, well, not, I, you know, 3D platformer that's more open than Crash. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of Reignited itself, you know, the game looks beautiful, right? Like the game looks really, really good. You know, Toys for Rob did a really good job with the graphics. The animations are really good too. Like each dragon you save has its own unique model for some reason. Like that, that they go like really hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of, like, the productive value for no reason. Um, you know, they all have different voice acting for each dragon you save. Um, yeah, the game just looks great. It kind of runs a little crusty. Like, it runs at 30 frames, but it kind of drops sometimes. Um, I, I don't think that, like, persists in the PC version if you're playing that, but I'm playing on PlayStation because why wouldn't I? Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, no, game is great. Uh, I'm really looking forward to playing Crash 2 and 3, and hopefully I could beat those before the next podcast, you know? And, yeah, I, I just love 3D platforming. <laughs> Every time I play one, I'm just like, yeah, 3D platformers are sick. Um so yeah, um, and I guess I, we could talk about Lego Star Wars now. Um, okay, uh, yeah, wait. So so, uh, so did you watch the Disney trilogy movies before you played? No. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. So, all right. So th- this is funny. So I have only watched Force Awakens. I watched it in theaters, uh, mm-hmm. and I liked it. You know, I think Force Awakens is pretty like harmless in terms of like what it does because it's basically just a New Hope. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, like it, yeah. So uh, yeah, I really like Force Awakens when it came out. Um, when Last Jedi came out, it was you know very controversial. People were very angry and stuff. And I'm like, okay, I I won't watch it. Like or I want. It went from I won't watch it in theaters to just I just didn't watch it. And then when Rise of Skywalker <laughs> came out, it was just a fucking shit show. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'm not even going to bother with Last Jedi at this point. So yeah, that, that's kind of my history with the sequel trilogy where I, I really only watched Force Awakens. And this is really my first exposure to the other two movies was through this game. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess I can start with the sequel trilogy. Yeah, it's a fucking mess. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can see why people don't like it very much. Uh, Force Awakens, again, it's harmless, but it's basically it's just a new hope. Like, it's basically just following the same like beat to beat. Um, and, you know, I think the main issue a lot of people have is with, like, Rey just kind of, like, yoinking the spotlight from Finn at the end. Because, like, oh, I'm the Jedi. And I, I kind of felt that way when I was watching the movie, too. Like, I'm, like, I don't really have anything with Rey. Like, I know people are weird about that. Where people are, like, <laughs> really... Yeah, I, like, I, that's fine. I, I just feel like they build up Finn so much in Force Awakens where he just he just gets kind of relegated to, like, a side character, which is kind of weird. Yeah. Um, and then Last Jedi, when I was playing through the Lego version of it. Um, I could see why people got really angry with Luke's character because he kind of just becomes a dick and like he's like oh well, he was like training like Kylo Ren but then he mm-hmm. went evil and then he got sad and then he just went to his little island and be like no one can learn about Jedi's anymore or something uh, that was kind of weird <laughs> but honestly <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't like hate it. at least in Lego form I'm like okay I could kind of see what they were going with I guess but like I don't really agree with the characterization with some things um and then Rise of Skywalker is actually fan fiction. I was actually like <laughs> appalled. I'm like, holy shit, this is as bad as people say. I'm really happy to play the Lego version because at least they make fun of it. Like, yeah. they were like straight up dogging on the sequels in the, in the Lego games, too. They're like, yeah. like, Kyler Ryder was just like, yo, this is like fan fiction. I'm like, yeah, you're not wrong. I'm like, what is this? Um, so, yeah, that was. That was my experience with the sequel trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, like, when it comes to the new Disney movies, like, after I saw The Rise of Skywalker, which I saw, like, opening weekend, because I was, like, I got, like, PTSD from, like, uh, The Force Awakens when uh, people were saying Han Solo dies, and I was, like, I don't, yeah. I don't want this last movie to get spoiled for me, you know? So I was, like, fuck it, like, I'll go, I'll go see it, because, like, I honestly really loved The Last Jedi a lot. 
Um, it, it does have its problems, obviously. Uh, when fucking Leia uh, in the fucking uh, Lego yeah. game, she like reeled herself in. I was like, yeah. that's ex- that's exactly what it kind of looked like. Cause like she just like randomly just like used the force to like go back there. I was yeah. like, wait, they could have like written her out and like killed her there, but I guess they wanted to keep using her for the movies. But anyways, um, yeah, you know the way that these games just make fun of the movies is just so much fun. I just yeah. laughed like a few times during every single episode because it was like, yep, that that that's stupid that's ridiculous um but yeah just having like kylo ren be like this like darth vader simp that was also kind of funny um but yeah definitely like the way that finn was set up in force awakens was really really good like he was a fucking like stormtrooper that like went rogue and like you know he was like i want to do the right thing and i was like all right cool and then like the second movie it was kind of like all right, Ryan Johnson kind of like pushed him to the uh, the side to like reinforce this idea that like Ray is a nobody and like because of that that doesn't mean that she can't be a Jedi kind of thing. And that's why like those scenes with like the kids like using the Force and shit like that was yeah. kind of like, you know, what Ryan Johnson was trying to say like, hey, you know, like you know, any anyone can have the Force. And then like the third movie they're like fuck it she's palpatine's daughter or granddaughter yeah. i was like what the fuck are you guys doing man uh they, they literally like used the last jedi to 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 sort of uh be a response to the force awakens because it was oh my god it's so similar so then they did something different and then the fucking rise of skywalker was the same thing where they were like oh my god now we have to like redo like what fucking ryan johnson did ah uh, so it is what it is. Honestly, like, I didn't mind Luke being a fucking asshole because it's like, man, my man's jaded. So, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he don't give a fuck no more. So, like, you know, let him rock. Yeah, yeah I mean, I had to actually watch the movies now. I, I was mm-hmm. actually, like, planning to go back. I actually was, like, I, I watched Phantom Menace again. It's really shit. <laughs> <If> anyone, <laughs> still wondering. But, yeah, I, I probably am going to I'm gonna watch the, all the movies again because I'm kind of, like, also in a Star Wars mood, so I might as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with Kenobi coming out, and I do yeah. want to watch Clone Wars for real because I've been meaning to do that forever. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be pretty interesting to start getting perspective on like all the trilogies, like now that I'm like an adult. Cause I know a lot of people, there's a lot of rose tinted glasses with the prequels now because you know, a lot of people our age grew up with the prequels and like, mm-hmm. like oh, they're better than they are. I mean, I still like episode three, episode three is still fine, like it, it's a good yeah. time, and you know, the, the Clone Wars stuff is always like good. Uh, but you know, episode one, it's bad. <laughs> like Phantom Menace isn't isn't a good movie. <laughs> um, and then I, I'm Attack of the Clones was just boring when I was a kid. Like, I didn't even like it as a kid. Um, so it's gonna be interesting to watch that movie again. But um, I guess we should go back to talking about the actual <laughs> game. So so uh, Lego Star Wars, uh, like you said, um, yeah, I was uh, I, I thought the game was really funny. Like I thought it was a lot of moments that made me chuckle. I mean, it was not like it's gonna make you like laugh super hard, but it's like yeah, very yeah. nice quips and like stuff. Like it, it was good. Like I really enjoyed the humor in the game. Um, and again, this is kind of like my first real Lego game. I never really played any before it. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I just found the gameplay to be really addicting. You know, I like collecting the studs and collecting just all the other bullshit around. <laughs> um, I think the missions get, you know, break up the monotony of like, you know, just like collect shit. Uh, you know, usually it's like a vehicle mission and some other stuff you could do, like more combat focus. Like, I really like the lightsaber duels whenever you have to like fight like a boss, basically. Mm-hmm. I thought those were pretty fun. Um, I do think the game does have too many collectibles because uh, oh, you're getting, 100%. Like, yeah, you're getting a bang for your buck. But I was thinking after it beat the game, uh, you know, I was collecting a lot of stuff. I, I put in like 25 hours into the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm like, okay, let me see how many collectibles are because I was like, pretty interested to 100% it. And I, I put the pause menu and I'm not even halfway through. I'm like, hey, fuck <laughs> this. I'm not, I'm not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah there's a lot of stuff to collect and a lot of planets to see and i think the planets are all really crafted really well like i love exploring mm-hmm. all the different planets and stuff that's something i always wanted to do as a kid like when i played battlefront and battlefront 2 like the original games sometimes i wouldn't even play the game i would just like run around like the the different planets because it was super cool just to like experience that and um now that you could do that and the game rewards you for the exploration i think that's really cool but yeah i do think there's it's kind of like the same issue i had with mario odyssey where i think there's just too much oh, yeah. shit Mm-hmm. Um, and you know it, it just gets stale by the end and um you know it just has the same issue as odyssey at least you could like upgrade yourself if you have upgrades you could at least use the kyber bricks for and you can unlock new characters so that's cool but a lot, again a lot of characters do end up playing the same like you know each there's like i forgot how many classes they were but you know each character in that class basically ends up feeling the same by the end so it doesn't really matter that much but yeah again if if you love collecting shit and like you love lego games and yeah this the, the you, should, you probably bought it already so um, <laughs> i guess i shouldn't be saying anything but yeah i think the game is really good i, I really enjoyed it myself I, I had a good time 
Yeah, like 100%. There's just like way too much shit. Yeah. <laughs> like if you think you're going to get everything like on your first run through of a level, that's not going to happen. Like 100%. <laughs> I think that um, games like this and Mario Odyssey where like the collectibles are so fucking high. It's like, all right, like if you're going to 100% the game, like you're going to get your bang for your buck 100%. Um, uh, you know, kind of like play on where is it 100%? Yeah. And you're 100, yeah. Anyways, yeah, I get. <laughs> um, you know, I think that. Th- you know, when I played the first Lego game when I was younger, me and my brother 100% of that because it was just like five mini kits and that was pretty much it. And then like True Jedi, like that was right. it. And now it's like you got like the Kyber bricks or, or whatever. You got the fucking mini kits. You got like the characters you need to like unlock and all of this other shit. I'm like, holy fuck. If you're going to 100% this game, like you either have to no life it or like slowly do it. <laughs> like, yeah. There's like no in between because it's like there's so much to do and i wonder if anyone on uh, how long to be.com actually 100 percent of it it's like 80 hours i keep hearing 80 fucking hours <laughs> it's like as long as like persona or xenoblade i'm like i'm good that shit is crazy yeah, yeah. fucking 82 hours oh my yeah. lord yeah not nah, <laughs> like like if you're gonna pay 60 dollars for the like if you're gonna pay sixty dollars, you're getting your bang for your buck. Um, but uh, I think, as we know, like third-party games will slowly decrease in in price, especially with these sort of like younger kids games in particular. So, um, but yeah, I really liked how they really went all in and in, in terms of like making like the best Lego game possible. Like I really mm-hmm. loved the sort of like combat, sort of just like mixing in like circle and triangle, just like randomly and like yeah. jumping here and there. Like I was like, ah, oh, you know, cool. Like you know, it's not just me just mashing square, which you can still do, but you know. If I could, you know, hit circle every once in a while, hit triangle, you know, jump. No, I, yeah, I actually like the combo system. Like, it's very basic, but, like, as a Jedi or a Sith, you could, like, you know, press square, press X to do, like, a, like you could pop them in the air and do like, mm-hmm. aerial combos. Like, it's really fun. Like, it doesn't really do anything, but it's, like, it's more fun than pressing just square a bunch of times. So I do appreciate that they added at least some variety in combat. You know, you could shoot still and, you know, do whatever. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, the combat did end up feeling pretty good for, like, you know, a game like this. So I do appreciate that. <laughs> Yeah, and, like, this is my first Lego game that I played because, as you can tell, I'm, like, a fucking, like, OG when it comes to Lego games. Yeah. When they started adding voice acting, I was not playing them. Uh, not because <laughs> of that. It, it was just because, like, I fell out of them. Um, right. But, you know, playing this one with voice acting, like, it's honestly kind of fun. Um, I know that, that there's, like, mumble mode that you can do, which I might use at some point if I want to replay it. But, yeah, I think that the voice acting is really fun. I think that the way that they use the jokes and sort of like the humor in these games just like riff on the just like riff on the fucking source material cuz like Star Wars is made for kids and like, you know, fucking 30, 40 year old children on the internet like to, you know, make it the end all be all kind of thing, if you know what I'm yeah. saying. So <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I, I didn't play the original Lego game, so I don't really have any, like, affinity to the mumble mode stuff. Like, mm-hmm. if anything, the first real exposure I got to, like, Lego stuff was the Lego movie. Like, and I really enjoyed <laughs> that. So, I guess mm-hmm. I was just used to the voice acting uh, anyway. So, like, it didn't really bother me. I thought it was fine. So, like, you know, they did good jobs playing. I mean, some impersonations aren't great. Like, I think Kylo Ren's is pretty bad. But, um, <laughs> but for the most part, everyone does a pretty good job. So, yeah. Uh, this is this is a very good game. Uh, I'm very very happy that they were able to uh, create a game that is probably the best Lego game that they made so far. And obviously, like if they're gonna one up themselves, it's gonna be very fucking hard. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so hopefully, there's not as much crunch and sort of uh, as much stress on them to make the next Lego game, even if they you know have to or want to or whatever the case is. I think that this is this is this is a game that that they should be proud of 100 percent so yeah yeah it definitely is like i guess like the culmination of like all the lego games they've made like they really have learned about everything they've done so yeah, yeah that, it, it really was worth like i guess the, the hype and like the wait because i know people were waiting for this game for a while so yeah yeah i think it, they did deliver so lego end game type beat you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyways uh moving on we're going to talk about dr strange in the multiverse of madness so this is going to be spoilers uh so Damien, did you like or not like the movie? Because I was on Twitter and there was there was a lot more people that I did not expect to not like this movie. So um, I actually liked it a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. So and I, I can see why people won't like it though. Um, and I think there's two barriers of not liking it. One is just not liking Sam Raimi's style. Like if you just mm-hmm. are not used to it or you think it's too hokey or cheesy, like you just probably won't like that. I think the second barrier is Wanda, like, just what they did to her character, and if you're, like, okay with that. Like, I feel like those are the two mm-hmm. things that, like, would keep you from liking this movie. Uh, at least, that, that, like, when I was watching the movie, those were, like, the two barriers that, okay, I can see why people won't like this movie. Yeah. But, yeah. 
So I mean, like, I fucking loved it. Like after yeah, I watched I loved it, it too, yeah. Uh, I actually kind of wanted to rewatch it, but uh, you know, our friends are still trying to figure that out. So, um, but I definitely, definitely want to go rewatch this in theaters because this is. It was such a fun movie. I really liked it. Just seeing Sam Raimi's style, because I'm, you know, we're both big fucking nerds of, you know, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man movie. So yeah. we're able to tell like his his like uh, sort of directing style and sort of like the dumbass like uh, you know transitions. Not to say that they were actually dumbass or stupid, but you know, I was like, oh, Very you know, unique. like yeah, <laughs> it, like, like that's a cool transition, you know, like they, yeah. f- fucking MCU doesn't do that. They do the fucking jump cut with the big ass text or whatever, you know, like yeah. Um, I really like that they just allowed Sam Raimi to just do what he wanted and the horror stuff like i really like that i like that you know he was able to sort of like build suspense and sort of build that sort of uh you know scariness into the into this movie that was still pg-13 and you know them killing the fucking illuminati i think that that was like the biggest like oh shit like they're actually going there kind of thing you know yeah this straight up felt like like a scene that could have been in like deadpool or something like <laughs> yeah <laughs> holy shit that was violent there was so many times like oh my god <laughs> like uh, uh-huh. if, they, if, if you told me there was like an r cut i would believe you because like yeah. jesus christ dude like it got pretty violent mm-hmm. i like imagine little timmy wanting to oh i love doctor strange and then watching this <laughs> shit like my lord um <laughs> but yeah in terms of like the the actual horror elements yeah dude, i think it was pretty, i mean i don't think it's anything too intense like you're not gonna like, yeah. like jump out of your seat or anything but it's a lot of creepy like, imagery yeah, and yeah. stuff so so. I feel like if I was a kid and I was watching this movie, I'd yeah, be probably fucking scared. scared. Yeah, 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 I'd be it fucking scared. scared. Me too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd be agree. fucking yeah. scared. Yeah, but, if um, you're like younger, yeah, I'd probably scared. Yeah. I think that, <laughs> like you said, with the barrier with Wanda, I think that that's like another big thing because this is the first like big like MCU movie that deals with an MCU show. You know, yeah. like we had all of this character development and, and all of and all of this build up for Wanda in WandaVision. And some people skipped out on that. So like when they come into this, they're like, What the fuck's going on? What the fuck do you mean she like controlled a, a town and all of this other shit? Why, they're why like she obsessed with children. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, wait, these are her kids? She had kids? It's like, uh yeah, you know, a lot of stuff happened with it, uh what is it like six yeah, episodes they, or whatever. They really don't like catch you up too much either like they, mm-hmm. they do they say a little bit of things like oh i'm not here to talk to you about westfield being like what the fuck was that what what like <laughs> if you did not watch wandavision you would be lost and probably not give a shit about anything that's happening so yeah you definitely have to watch wandavision to like really like i guess like appreciate what this movie does i guess mm-hmm. um and i'm and, sure yeah i'm sure that there's people that watch wandavision after watching the movie they're like ah oh, shit <laughs> yeah and, i mean some people that watch wandavision might even be more mad at this movie just because mm-hmm. like how much they built Wanda, but again, that all right, this kind of goes both ways because it's like, yeah, they built up Wanda, but like, I, she was still like kind of like not okay by the end of it. Like, I don't know yeah. why so many people thought she was like, oh, she's okay, she dealt with it and everything when she clearly did it. At the end of it, she's using like the dark hold and doing crazy shit. So obviously, it was like you know building up for her to be an antagonist. I kind of knew she was going to be an antagonist in this movie. I didn't know Mm -hmm. to this extent. I know she was going to be the main antagonist, but I knew she was going to be like at least the antagonist for a little bit of the movie uh, and maybe like redeem herself towards the end, Um, which again kind of happens in this movie, but she did become like full-blown villain, which I did not expect. (laughs) So, yeah. Yeah, honestly, like I love that Wanda was like the main antagonist. I had a feeling that that was going to happen after she mentioned america without yeah. dr strange ever mentioning her and he was like how do you know her name and i was like ah shit she's she's up to some shit like she's fucking evil uh but hey like you know that was her being reasonable guys and i think that um as a person that you know really does like wanda like as a character and obviously yeah. like she is like the most powerful character in the mcu and having her be the antagonist force in this movie you know makes sense obviously like because of covid and like the way that they wanted this movie to come out they actually wanted this movie to happen before spider-man so it's kind of interesting to see how they like sort of swap things around and you know obviously like um you know seeing wanda do all all of that evil shit and just kill everyone and you know that was great i i honestly loved watching wanda play the villain no i I agree i think she played the villain really well and i think she's like up there like in the top three villains for me for the MCU, just because like you, you already knew her for so long, and I kind of like it when a good guy becomes a bad guy because you like mm-hmm. you know it kind of hurts more. Like honestly, yeah. when she was like breaking <laughs> down, I'm like, damn, I feel sad because you know she she was a good character and stuff, and now she's evil. 
Um, you know, that's why I like Loki and Thanos, too. Like, Loki did, like, the opposite, where he was, like, a villain and became a good guy. So it's kind of cool to see this happen. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, Thanos is Thanos, so. Um, but, yeah, I like, yeah, I thought she was a great villain, too. She was scary. She was powerful, you know. We already know she's really powerful. Like, during when she was fighting the Illuminati, like, she, like, destroyed Captain Marvel in that universe, which is supposed to be, like, another, like, like superpower level heroes so Mm -hmm. um it was good to see her like go full on out and just kill everyone (laughs) so that was kind of (laughs) cool when she like fucking halved uh captain carter that shit that shit took me out i was like no way they fucking did that i was like holy shit (laughs) (laughs) i know i get the one that like like was like the most violent to me was like the tuning fork man like his fucking head exploded oh, yeah. like, Jesus <laughs> what mouth? i was like oh nah, nah. my lord i'm like what the fuck you can show this yeah. to the marvel thing um it, oh yeah. I, I was gonna say i was gonna mention the other cameos i guess because uh, oh yeah Illuminati. okay uh, so had, like what yeah what what reaction caused the most the uh, most hype me personally john krasinski as mr fantastic that was me i was yeah, fucking clapping office. Yeah. I was clapping a lot, um, but you know we already knew Patrick Stewart was gonna be in uh, Doctor Strange, so like I, I was I like, did it. "Oh really, bro?" <laughs> he was like, that. "He should have in the fucking trailer and shit." Uh, really? Anyways, I, I, mean, yeah, I yeah. forgot I, when he showed up. I was like, "Wait, what?" Yeah, no, I mean, like he wasn't like clearly in the e, oh, okay. in the e trailer. Like you saw like uh, like a I guess like his arm or some shit, and like right. heard him for a second. But um, yeah, like Patrick Stewart, uh, that one caused the most hype in my theater but me personally i fucking love seeing john krasinski as mr fantastic but we'll get into that a l- in just a little bit <laughs> yeah um yeah he yeah i uh I, I didn't know he was gonna be in the movie uh freaking uh patrick stewart <laughs> like when he rode in on this freaking like Lam- lamborghini <laughs> wheelchair i was like oh shit and it was pretty cool because it played the 90s x-men theme too when mm-hmm. he did that. like that it's just pure fan service i'm like that, that's pretty sick and you know jim from the office <laughs> Mr. Fantastic. I'm like, okay, I guess that we're doing that too. Um, so yeah, it was really cool to see like these like people like come and I don't think I mean I, I just, like he's never been in there like any superhero thing. I don't think I, all yeah. I know him is from Jim from the Office. I, I don't really know what else he's done. Oh no, he yeah. did um that other movie, A Quiet uh, Place. Yeah, Quiet he Place. Directed yeah. and starred in it. No, he directed he did... that. Okay, yeah, I didn't yeah, know yeah. That. yeah <laughs> okay. my man, my man, goaded, bro. Like, oh, shit. Okay. Right, yeah, John Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic Marvel. Please fucking bring him back for the Fantastic Four because he is mine and a lot of other people sort of like dream casting for that character. Uh, there were there were fan edits made like years and years ago of like him as like Mr. Fantastic and he looked amazing, you know. And like I think that he would fit perfectly in that role just because he's he's really really good, obviously. So yeah. seeing him in this movie and you know seeing him go so soon, I was like, oh shit. Uh, but kind you know, spaghetti, ho- yeah. hey, look, you know that's just that's just one universe. So you know, hopefully, hopefully in you know six one six, you know the main universe, you know we get him back. But um, apparently that was sort of as like a, a sort of like test run to see audiences' reaction to him being as Mister Fantastic. And you know, so far so good. Hopefully, you know, um, I would love to see him in a Fantastic Four movie because I think that he would do great. And whether or not uh, his co-star is Emily Blunt, his actual wife. You know that would be cool. I know that, that she's very, cool. she's very adamant about like not being in the MCU and stuff like that. I think I literally like said this shit like last episode. <laughs> of, you know, because like I had no idea like any anything, and then like you know I uploaded the podcast so that I fucking go into theaters and I'm like, oh shit, he's there. Like, he's <laughs> actually fucking there. Um, but yeah, just like the cameos, I think that they really use them well. I think that people that were expecting a shit ton of cameos of you know seeing like deadpool and like a bunch of other just like marvel properties and this shit i think that those expectations were blown way out of proportion you know there were leaks quote unquote showing like a bunch of stuff and i'm just like some really bad photoshop and just like a shaky cam job kind of thing like obviously like hindsight you know because now i've seen the movie so like those leaks are fake but you know, there are people on Twitter that were really expecting an, another sort of Spider-Man No Way Home situation, you know? Yeah, right. Like, I, I didn't think that was going to happen either. I mean, I, you know, obviously No Way Home, we're big Spider-Man fans, so we were more on the nose for that. I mean, that's kind of what <laughs> I expected it to be on. Uh, you know, just like, you got some fun cameos, and it was, but it was mostly focused on Doctor Strange um, mm-hmm. and like uh, Wanda, because we kind of knew that as well. Um, and I think that's all I really need to focus on. If it was too split, it would just been like, you know... I think the story just would have been worse because it wouldn't be able to focus on anything. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I think this movie did a good job, you know, 
sort of giving Wanda sort of like a good like conclusion because I, I feel I mean they're probably going to do more with, with her I, I mean the other Vision is still somewhere there I'm actually surprised they didn't mention Vision more I think it was only mentioned like once it was mostly about like her kids and just Wanda herself yeah. um, so you know that's probably going to be left for something else uh, but I do like that she kind of came to her senses at the end and you know was able to like fix everything because even during WandaVision, I didn't really see them redeeming her too, too much. I feel like it would have been a little a little too light. It was like, okay, you could just be an Avenger again after, like, you know, holding hostage a whole town. Like, I feel like that's kind of <laughs> fucked up. So I, I, I felt like she was going to die in this movie as, like, a heroic thing. But after everything she did in this movie, I'm like, yeah, she definitely had to die. Because I'm like, that's a little too much. So I'm glad she went but out. is she like, dead, though? That's true. She could not be dead. <laughs> she could be, like, some other bullshit. I don't know. There's just a bunch of rocks fell on her, you know? So that's a good point. <laughs> But, she could still be alive. Um, yeah. And I, I do like Dr. Strange's more character. You know, he was going like mega simp and stuff. Like, oh, yeah. Him. I love you in every universe. I was like, yes. Down yeah. bad. <laughs> down bad. Yep. Uh-huh. He is simping, bro. <laughs> it's like, God, fucking damn it. Not another one. You know? Um, but yeah, I honestly, uh, just like one quick scene, you know, yeah. the whole like wedding stuff, I, I thought that that was very fun. Just sort of like open the movie with that also the humor in this movie was very like sam raimi if i can say yeah. that just because it wasn't like you know too on the on the nose and be like yeah, too marvel yeah. Yeah, yeah too too much mcu humor because i think that when there were jokes like they were appropriate and, and well-timed I agree, um, yeah but i think that you know opening up with that guy being like so uh was that the was that the only way that you guys could have done you know i fucking lost everything i was like oh <laughs> shit fuck <The> <laughs> yeah, he's like yeah you know like you know the, that was the only way, so... Um, and then, you know, he, he goes on this multiverse uh, sort of mayhem. And then the fucking suit-up scene, oh my god, when he just, like, fuck this shit, fuck this wedding, you know, he just, like, puts the glass down and then just, like, jumps out of, like, yes, that's what I like to see. <laughs> that's my man. And it is funny seeing, like, you know, Doc Strange was, like, I, I like the first movie, but it wasn't really until, like, the Avengers movies where I really started liking his character, like, a whole lot. And mm-hmm. No Way Home as well. Like, now he's one of my, one of my favorite Marvel characters, so I'm happy to see that sort of continue in this movie because I think he did a great job in this movie just being like this like you know asshole <laughs> I mean, you know, Dr. Strange <laughs> not really like you know he's a good guy but he's still you know he's got some sass on him and stuff um, mm-hmm. and I really did enjoy that um, I, I guess we, we didn't even talk about like the other new character like America oh, America, America Chavez yeah yeah Dude, I was gonna bring time, her up Every time they mention her name, like what, what America? What's happened to America? But then, like, oh no, her. Okay, I was so confused. I was like, why, why are we talking about America? <laughs> yeah, that's her name. Um, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, and you know the whole like opening up the movie with that scene with a different Doctor Strange yeah. and him like almost killing her. I was like, oh shit! Like, what the fuck's going on here? And the way that they use his body like for the end i was like oh so like they bring it went, back and you know yeah, went full evil dead yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. so like literally like everything in this movie like the purpose of this scene somehow brings it back to an- another thing which was very very cool to see um but yeah i think that america chavez's character the way that they brought her in to this like, sort of because like she is like the multiverse i guess like jumping character yeah um and the way that they used her in this movie and sort of introduced her and brought her backstory and explained it to the audience i thought was really well done i think that um you know i'm excited to see what else she can do next because there was like concept art of like her being in spider-man no way home but i think that that would have been a little too much so yeah you know i'm glad that you know they did some bullshit with fucking ned doing his thing you know which is still bullshit but hey you know like it's better than introducing a whole new character than trying to reintroduce her and you know dr strange too Everyone, right? everyone's a sorcerer <laughs> yeah no but um <laughs> But yeah, no, she's cool. I kind of wish we saw more of her, but, but like, I understand that movie was already kind of packed. Because um, mm-hmm. I was surprised it wasn't like more of her since she was the one like kind of. I mean, she was kind of she was kind of locked up for most of it, you know. That, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, she was kind of like you know just locked by the end of it. But I do like her. I really like the effects when she does her multi punch thing. It's like it looks mm-hmm. like the subspace zones from Scott Pilgrim or something. Like it's pretty cool looking. Um, and yeah, I hope we just see more of her. You know, I think. Um, I mean, her backstory is a little weird. <laughs> Whereas, mm-hmm. uh, I got scared by a bee, and then that's how everything yeah. started. That, that is pretty funny. But, um, yeah, obviously that's going to be a plot thread for later if she gets her own show or movie. Probably a show, but mm-hmm. I guess we'll see. Um, but, yeah, she seems like a very interesting character. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Um, honestly, I just, just really like the... I really like when the MCU has these directors that really sort of, like, make Do the their MCU, own thing. Yeah, make the... Like, you know, James Gunn and... Uh, the other guy uh, with Tag- yeah him yeah those two and now sam raimi like i think they do it like so much to bring their own style to the mcu and 
it, it's like no question that these movies are some of my favorites because of that, right? Like I love Guardians and I love Thor Ragnarok because, you know, they put so much flavor into these movies. And, you know, sometimes you need that with something that's been going on for like, what, like 10 plus years now with the MCU. Like you kind of need that sort of change in direction uh, with these movies. So um, I, I really like what Sam Raimi brought to the table. It was really weird. Uh, the jokes are weird, you know. Like the, the, mm-hmm. the, it was just a weird movie, and I, I really enjoyed it for that. Um, like even a lot of the fight scenes, like the when they were doing like that like music battle. Oh it yeah, was so, that shit was dope. It, yeah, it was dope. <laughs> like right, it was so weird and cool. Like I, I really enjoyed that, and just all the special effects and stuff, like how creepy it could get. Um, I, I think he did a, a lot to in, like interject like his own style into the MCU without like compromising it too much. Um, so yeah, I, I really enjoyed it for that reason alone. So and plus it was a good movie. So <laughs> yeah, I mean like Sam Raimi's style of directing is like very unique, and I really appreciate him coming in to do this movie, which is why I was very excited to watch it. Just because I want to see him, you know, hold hold camera shots for a bit. You know, do these yeah. do these interesting transitions. Do the you know the first scene where like you know we see the multi-universe dr strange diet then it flips under to our dr strange waking up from that nightmare quote unquote you know um the way that they just use the way that he just uses the camera and and you know his vision and shit like that like i just i just love this movie and i really want to go see it again hopefully soon and if not i'll fucking buy it on 4k and i'll watch it at home um but yeah you know dr strange multiverse of madness uh i do find it you know very interesting that there's a lot of people that just don't like this movie for whatever reason and just seeing some of the complaints on tiktok and twitter and people like what the fuck is this weird transition with wong walking in i was like okay bro you've never never watched another movie in your goddamn life other than what's in the mcu so it just bothers me because some like you get people saying oh mcu is too stale all the same and then when they try to change it up it's like oh why is it weird and different i'm like whatever yeah (laughs) I don't know I mean, different like, people, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like I'm getting that sort of like Marvel fatigue just because they're releasing so much shit now with yeah. the shows too. Um, but we'll talk about we'll talk more about that when we talk about She Hulk. But um, yeah, you know, this is a great movie. I honestly really hope Sam Raimi doesn't read those mean comments too much because you know he really he, he honestly really fucking put himself down after Spider Man Three, and you know this is his like return to uh, doing another superhero movie. So I hope that he does more um not sure exactly what else but you know whatever he does next i'm sure that it, you know they will pull tickets pull pull people into seats and i'll be one of them you know that <laughs> yeah i really hope he he continues to direct more at least with dr strange i think dr strange is a good fit for him so mm-hmm. um i guess we oh, wait what do you oh, yeah. think about the after credit scenes because some people had a problem with the second one <laughs> the second one, i thought it was funny <laughs> yeah i mean like look bro it's fucking bruce campbell see like that's that's another thing people people don't understand that like every single sam raimi movie he has his friend bruce come in yep. and do and, and do a dumbass cameo and you know his cameo was great you know i think that he really you know they had to have that scene with that fucking you know guy being like yeah you know money does matter here here and shit like that and then the second post credit scene because you know there's this whole thing with fucking marvel movies sort of stigmatizing people staying after the credits which me personally like when it's not a marvel movie i'm, I'm fucking leaving i yeah, don't care same. <laughs> yeah. i don't care like if there's like one post credit scene sure you know like which with uh the uh, sonic 2 movie i almost spoiled it uh to anyone that hasn't watched it but you know with that <laughs> with that scene you know i, I obviously stayed but what the second one it's like it's over. I'm like, yes, that's so good. You know, yeah. like that's I, I, a I like great that. line. I, mean, I know some people get really pissy when it's like a joke one, but like I don't uh-huh. know, they're funny. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm just gonna stay anyway. So <laughs> it's like, <laughs> look, you stayed for what an extra five minutes of time. Like that was gonna matter, you know. So, but the first post credit scene was a little confusing because I was like, what the fuck is this third eye and then this new character? So I guess they're setting more stuff up for Doctor Strange. Well, so yeah, it's probably because he used the dark hold, like to, even for that little bit of time, it was enough to like corrupt him, I guess. And then he got the third eye, but I guess it is not affecting him too much because he seems okay with it now. He's just like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm going to fight with it. So, but yeah, that's going to be pretty interesting to see what happens with that and like how it affects his powers or whatever. Um, but yeah, whatever to do next with Doctor Strange and stuff, like I'm, I'm down with it. And hopefully, Sam Raimi is like, you know, keeps doing it because uh, I really enjoyed this movie a lot too. I, I, I need to see where I rank it. I probably need to watch it again before I could really like say. But um, it's definitely up yeah. there, I think. So yeah, I definitely say top five for me. Yeah, maybe number five. Who knows? But you're gonna have to really look at the, look at the list of movies and shit again. But anyways, moving on. Let's get into our whole list of news. Uh, so first up, Avatar: The Way of Water. So this was. Uh, yeah. The trailer that uh, premiered during the Doctor Strange yeah. uh, movie, which is obviously very smart 
to do. But uh, I actually didn't watch it because we fucking showed up late because of, of uh, traffic. But uh, seeing it on YouTube, you know, um, it still looks great. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know? it's Avatar. <laughs> it is Avatar. And I think the reason why Avatar 1 did so good back then in like 2009 or whatever was because it was so visually fucking stunning. And like, yeah. I think that this movie is doing the same thing. The way of water. Like when you do water CG, that shit is mad hard. And like, it looks pretty good. So, <laughs> yeah, like... Um, I, yeah, I seeing it on a big screen. This trailer was really nice because I, I think that's that's like the main thing with Avatar. It's like how it looks, how pretty it is, the music, mm-hmm. like everything does like move you because it's just how pretty it is. Um, but like everything I'm seeing here is just like yeah, it's Avatar. Like none of none of this, like who can <laughs> like I. I didn't watch the first Avatar again because I thought yeah. the first Avatar. I watched it in theaters, obviously, because that's where like most of the magic happened when you watch Avatar with, with the 3D glasses and stuff, and how amazing it was. And I was left, you know, thinking it was really visually stunning and stuff. But uh, like the story was just like whatever. Like I, didn't, I just didn't feel that attached. Like if you told me to name the main character, I would not. I would not be able to tell. You. <laughs> um, Same. And it's not really a story that I felt it needed to continue, especially with like five other movies or something after this. But uh, I'm gonna watch it anyway. Uh, it'd probably be a good time regardless just by looking at it. Um, and I think the world is very pretty, but uh, in terms of like the actual plot and story and stuff, it's really going to have to do more, I think, to like engage people. Because I feel like after this movie, I think people might just be sick of it. Like, okay, well, I've I seen the pretty visuals, now what? So, um, yeah, I yeah. Think it's, it's going to have to show a bit more, I think. It kind of is like uh, a thing of like, do we really need it? Because it's been so yeah. long sort of thing. But, you know, he, James Cameron's like, no, no, no. We're making this shit happen. So, yeah. hey, you know, now we got Avatar 2. And, yeah, I mean, I feel the same way about it. Just like, you know, it's a visually pleasing movie. But, like, the story of it, I can't fucking tell you. It's been yeah. so long since I've watched Avatar. And I think a lot of people are, are in that same boat. Um, so I wonder how well the movie's going to do. It's probably still going to do well. Oh, it's going to do but, so well, yeah. But, you know, how much is that going to weigh on the visual aspect and, you know, not the story aspect, you know? Because I can't, I can't remember a goddamn thing of what happens in fucking Avatar 1. Um, but, you know, I'm going to rewatch it and then watch this movie because I don't want to go into the shit blind and, like, fucking try to remember everything for myself because that's not yeah. going to happen. Uh, but... Yeah, it does look visually like really, really good. I think that this is gonna be another movie that people are gonna see multiple times because of the the fucking CG and sort of how how well that it's presented. You know, like they obviously pumped in a lot of movie and sort of a lot of people behind to make sure that this movie looks as good as possible. And making you know it called the Way of Water because they're using a lot of water and a lot of CG water. I think that that is you know very cool because. Like I said earlier, doing CG water is very hard, and making it look realistic and convincing is going to be kind of crazy. So um, it looks like it's going to deliver on that, but, you know, hopefully that the final product, product you know, actually does deliver on it, you know? Yeah, we just have to wait and see. I mean, like, Disney has been really pushing Avatar, like, a lot, <laughs> like, as well. So um, with James Cameron and Disney both, like, really full steam ahead, like, really hoping this catches on, which it might. Uh, but we're gonna have to see. Like, I, I don't know if it was lightning in the bottle or if like what, because uh, you know when the movie came out, like that sort of CG was like really impressive. I mean, it still mm-hmm. is. And you know, the 3D was also really well done. Because um, before that, 3D was so gimmicky with the red and you know red and blue glasses and stuff. <laughs> uh, you know, the 3D and Avatar really did enhance the image as it like you know some of the backgrounds popped in or popped out and stuff. So yeah, it's definitely gonna have to be a thing where I actually see and like. I, I do want just more substance from the story at this point. Um, but I'm sure I'll still enjoy just looking at it. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> um, okay. So next, we, we got some video games. Uh, so mm-hmm. Gotham Knights, uh, they showed a gameplay demo. And they actually canceled the previous gen versions, which is pretty good. Like, obviously not good if you, you know, don't own a PS5 or Xbox One. But <laughs> <laughs> I, at this point, I would rather have a game that um, sort of runs well on, like, current gen then runs like shit i mean we saw what happened with cyberpunk where they decided yeah. to release it on previous gen and it ran like shit is like is that really the experience you really want like at that point i might as well just try to save up and hope to get a ps5 or a series x because why would i play the inferior version at that point um and it's been like two years around i know that's still really hard to get yeah but, um you know at this point i think we should start phasing out the multi-release like it should just start being next gen at this point because it's been it's been two years which is crazy to think about um but yeah anyway i i do think the game in terms of this game, so I, I haven't really played any of the Arkham games. I really should get on that. 
Mm-hmm. But uh, even as just like an outsider, just watching this, um, I feel like the combat is very floaty or like not very impactful. I don't know if you feel that too, but um, yeah, whenever, I don't like, know. yeah, whenever they're <laughs> fighting and stuff, like it does feel very like floaty and not like that great. Because I, I, I've seen countless gameplay of um, Arkham, you know, all the Arkham games, and that that combat feels very meaty, you know, very. Del- and so many games copy it because it's so good, right? Yeah. Um, and this game looks like a big step down in terms of like that combat system. I, I don't know what do you, you, have, you probably have more to say, like because I, I haven't played any of the Arkham games. Yeah, uh, I can see where you're coming from. I mean, like you know, Nightwing sort of like going yeah, back Night, and like, forth between yeah, the dude, two villains. That looks really stupid, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. It does look stupid, but that is sort of like the uh, the sort of like Arkham style of combat. Because like Batman, Batman would fucking do that. Like when That's you're in, when you're in like a fucking like. Uh, hall or whatever and you're and you're like fighting like multiple dudes and shit um i think that giving uh fucking red hood these like fucking magical powers is kind of funny and goofy and yeah. giving them n- non-lethal bullets non-lethal rounds, yeah. <laughs> that shit was hilarious i was like no fucking shot they're doing this um i guess for whatever reason they want to do it like that it, the game is still not rated i think so maybe they're trying to get around the m rating you know try to still make it t for teen but I yeah don't know more why. sales that way yeah but you know I feel like in 2022, people are going to get away around that by ordering it on Amazon or, yeah. you know, just buying it online or whatever the case is. But yeah, um, I'm not exactly, you know, sure what they can do about the combat just because like they're just using what works already. And I think that them just um, just emulating what the Arkham games were is fine. Um, it does feel a little floaty you know it doesn't look like the punches pack as much you know of a hit uh maybe it's just because previously you know the fucking ragdoll physics were just so hilarious and funny um and now it's not like that but i think that the game itself is still gonna be like really fun the fact that you can play a multiplayer arkham game like this with like rpg elements where you can like upgrade stuff and like boost up your character and shit like that like that's gonna be fun like regardless um and yeah, you know, just having the multiple characters and everything like that. Like this gameplay demo w- was much needed because I was honestly kind of kind of losing hype for the game. But now that I've seen, you know, this I guess like 13 minute gameplay demo, it is really really cool still, and I cannot wait to play it for myself. As for canceling the previous gen versions, you know, like that obviously sucks, and that's gonna sort of like set a precedent for other third party studios to be like, hey guys, it's it's okay to let it go <laughs> you know yeah, um i think that releasing a a inferior version um for the e previous gen just for them to suffer and sort of like play like the worse and buggier version of it people are, are just not gonna buy it at that point because obviously like word of mouth goes around very very fast within the the gaming community because of the internet and once people hear like this version is the worst people people are, are not gonna buy it you know so they probably just couldn't run the game on yeah those previous uh, generations because they were like, this game's so fucking big. You know, it's probably like fucking 30 minute loading times or some shit. I don't know. You know, it it's probably going to, you know, take a while to load everything and whatnot. But uh, seeing like, I guess like the heroes outside of their costumes was kind of interesting. Um, people, I think we're roasting uh, Red Hood in terms of like how we looked. He's like, it's not my Red Hood. He, <laughs> where's the Giga Chad, you know, kind of thing. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm not. I'm not obviously like the biggest fan of Batman, but I but I have played all of the uh, Arkham games and sort of uh, know a lot more about Batman I, than I guess like the average person would. But yeah, you know the game still looks good. I'm still excited for it. Hopefully it 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 lands on its feet and uh, doesn't have uh, too bad of of a press release when it comes out. So uh, hopefully the PC version is good because I know every single Arkham game that comes out on PC is just a fucking buggy ass mess. So yeah, that that's always something that's been like pretty consistent. Um, yeah, I, I would actually have to go play the um, Arkham games like before even like considering this. <laughs> but yeah, it, it does look like hopefully it turns out good. Um, hopefully, could iron out some of the like combat issues if they're having any. And yeah, I, I do think the um, canceling the last gen versions was probably the right call to kind of make it run well because I'm kind of tired of games running like shit. So because <laughs> we have the new consoles, you might as well like use them. So yeah, um, yeah. So like, if you're mad about that, then just be like, do you want to play a super subpar like game or you want to play how it actually should be played? So mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, we got more. Oh wait, I already talked about. <laughs> I was like, wait, what am I oh, talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. I got it, bro. So we got Mario Strikers Battle League. I'm yeah. fucking excited for this game because I love Mario Strikers. But um, they pretty much just gave us a overview trailer f- 
pretty much four or five minutes of just showing everything, uh, which I think is better than doing like I guess I like a direct style of video because like that yeah. would be way longer. But just having like a overview trailer where they just like discuss things and sort of like what's new and what's different and what's returning and what's not. Um, I think that them having the sort of like I guess like a uh, friendly tackle was really cool. Uh, sort of like working with your team is like fuck, fucking yeah. hit me, bro, hit me, hit me. <laughs> that, that's pretty creative, yeah. Yeah, I really do like that and sort of what the online elements that they do. I'm not surprised that it's the way it is. Like, you know, just having straight up just like, you know, 1v1 lobbies or anything like that. No, they got to have like these leagues or whatever the fuck that they're doing. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, it looks like it looks like Mario Mario Strikers charged from the Wii, but a little better. So, yeah, again, I never played Strikers <laughs> as well. Um, but yeah, for what they're showing, it looks like a fun arcadey uh, soccer game uh, for the most part. You know, they have all these mm-hmm. wacky things. I, I I can't tell you any of the differences from the GameCube or Wii version because again, I didn't play those. Uh, I know people are very upset that Daisy is in it. Like, is not in this oh, apparently. Oh my god! Like, the the fucking really Daisy mad. Sims. The yeah. Daisy Sims. <laughs> people were very angry, like on Twitter. I'm like, all right, like we should probably. Come. I mean, like I get it, I guess, but like. You know, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> calm down, guys. Calm um, down. Yeah, yeah. But it, she ain't going nowhere. It's okay, guys. <laughs> but yeah, it looks good. I think it does look a little better than the previous sports games. I get people were really hard on like uh, tennis aces and the super rush, the, the golf one. I think mm-hmm. they were fine. I mean, like when I play these, I don't have like a deep rooted attachment to these Mario sports games because I didn't buy them on GameCube because they were way too expensive when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I would rather get like a better game. <laughs> but. Um, I, I don't know. I thought the Switch versions for those games were fine. Like, I know some people go really hard on them, but, like, I don't know. I, I, I think they were fine. They did what it did. You know, you're playing tennis and you're playing golf. Like, I actually enjoyed the golf game quite a bit. Um, yeah. So, like, Strikers looks like it's going to be that same exact niche for me as well. Like, it's going to just feel like, oh, I want to play, like, a, like an arcade soccer game. And then there you go. Um, they haven't really said anything about, like, a story mode. I know, like, they shoehorn in, like, story modes in these. Uh, I don't know if this one's actually going to have one because they, they were just kind of talking about the multiplayer, which is, you know, kind of what we're going to play it for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I don't really know how the content is really gonna like land. And it looks a bit light, if I'm gonna be honest. But again, I don't really know what else you're supposed to like add to this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to to make it more content rich, I guess. But um, yeah, it looks good. I mean, I'll probably buy it if you guys buy it. <laughs> so that's kind of <laughs> yeah. like my uh, deciding factor. <laughs> so. <laughs> I mean, like I'm gonna buy it just because you know it's been so long since we had a Mario Strikers game. You know, I'm not a fan of the Wii one as much as the GameCube because I feel like the GameCube one was like perfect and then i don't know what they did with the wii one that made me feel like that but uh this game you know it seems like that they're adding stuff in that seems you know notable like the gear i think having like you know equipment that makes your character hit harder or move faster you know like just have toad like just run around everywhere because he's he's just fucking super fast or whatever i think that that's gonna be a fun factor to see on how people make team comms but obviously like if, if there's a if there's like a best sort of like you know equipment and, and sort of like stat booster like people are just going to use that sort of like what uh well like mark tennis aces did which is why a lot of people don't like that game is because it's like you know you're sort of just like uh playing a fighting game in a sense when you're right. playing that game so um hopefully you know this game isn't like that because it's fucking football it's not soccer like it's it shouldn't be that serious you know at, at, at the end of the day um but yeah, hopefully there is a sort of like campaign thing. Uh, it looks like that there's not. It's, it's, it seems like quick battle, uh, cup battles. Uh, maybe that's the the sort of like story mode with like the, you know, maybe you're playing for sort of like with like Mario Kart. You know, you're just playing like a bunch of different maps or different opponents and you just hopefully you get the gold cup or whatever. So, you know, all right. So now what we need now is uh, Mario Hoops 3 and 3. Uh, yes. Like new game. And I will <laughs> die happy. Because that was, that's actually the only Mario sports game I played as a kid. And I, I loved it. So give me Mario Hoops yeah. 3 and 3. <laughs> then I'll be fine. <laughs> that game is fucking fantastic. Just, despite me being left-handed. And I and I had to use the fucking A, B, X, Y yeah. to like move. Because oh, I'm God. fucking left-handed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, that sucks. Especially with Kid Across Uprising. But anyways. <laughs> um, yeah. You know. Hopefully, we do get more Mario Sports games because, you know, whether we like them or not, Nintendo's going to pump them out. So, yeah. um, I'll I'll see if I uh, have the budget for this one when it releases. <laughs> All righty. So, uh, we got Multiverses. This is the uh, Warner Brothers, like, sort of, like, Smash, like, clone, basically. Mm-hmm. And they had a, like, pros versus dev showcase when the cat and Void. <laughs> so, that's kind of <laughs> that's kind of cool. Uh, so, yeah, I, like, got two Smash players here. Um, and yeah, to show some gameplay. Um, uh, and yeah, I mean, it, it looks good. I, I feel like it, it does seem like a little, um, 
what's the word like sort of like messy like it's sort of like there's a lot of things happening on screen oh yeah it's like because it's double i don't really watch doubles when they do it in smash so i don't mm-hmm. know if it's as like this chaotic as well uh i don't do you watch any doubles when smash um, things happen i don't really watch yeah it. i watch doubles uh just because like there's there's some pretty cool stuff people do but i think the reason why this game looks so messy is because we don't know the move set that's know? fair like, yeah we don't know like how the game actually works and like we don't know what players are doing you know like we don't know what like the down special is we don't know what like the forward smash is and shit like that so like everything's new and because it's everything new on top of doubles it's it's gonna be a little hectic um yeah, well, 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 what I will say is that I think this is one of the best looking Smash clones that has happened. Because, yeah. um, you know, Nickelodeon All Stars, you know, um, I don't want to say too much bad about it because it's like clearly was had way lower budget than like any of the other Smash clones. Um, but, you know, it, it was lacking a lot of polish. Uh, you know, it was a lot of like glitches. The animations look weird. No voice acting. Honestly, it's kind of a big thing now I look about it because, you know, when when you hear the characters talking, well, yeah, that's that character. When when you have like SpongeBob not make a single noise, it's kind of creepy. <laughs> um, you know, places All Stars had was like weird with how it worked. We had to kill people with specials, and it was just kind of a pain in the ass. Um, and, but yeah, this game definitely looks like it's nailing like everything it should do. It's just if the fact that you like this more two v two setup, right? Because the game is kind of yeah built around two v twos. Like some characters are more tank based, some characters are more DPS based. Like so it definitely is a more like I guess like kind of overwatchy, like where you have like your hero selection and you want to make sure you're picking like good synergies with each other. Um mm-hmm. I don't I don't know if Smash works like that where you like you know I, I'm sure some characters work better with others, but um this game is definitely is like built into it. Like like I think um Batman could put like a smoke bomb and if your partner stands in there to do more damage or something so yeah it's definitely built into like this game to be a 2v2 game um this ain't could work in 1v1 but yeah it's definitely built around 2v2 um but yeah i think the game looks great uh you know i i don't know how the game plays yet because you know it's not out um mm-hmm. but everything i'm seeing it looks good like i think all the all the characters look really neat uh i mean i just like there's a lot of like uh like cartoon network stuff They're like there's like finn yeah. and jake like, that's pretty sick mm-hmm. steven steven looks a little weird <laughs> uh, <laughs> but i like this garnet i'm like that, that's cool um so yeah um that, i, I kind of am looking forward to it now to be honest at first i'm like what is this but now i'm like oh, this looks kind of cool so yeah it's gonna be free to play too so yeah um the devs are definitely putting a lot of i guess uh effort into making this as good as they can and that is really really cool to see i think that them emphasizing that this is like a different platform fighter with the whole 2v2 aspect you know when they first i guess showed the game off they were like yeah 2v2 and i was like all right like that's interesting that's different because you know all of these other platform fighters are 1v1 based uh having this one really be about you know 2v2 and it, it's not stocks either it's about kills so like the first one to get four kills you know oh, whoever that I is see, yeah yeah like whoever <laughs> whoever dies four four times first loses i guess so feeding uh, yeah <laughs> so you gotta see who the uh the uh answer is by uh, game two hopefully but um yeah i, I think that them putting a lot of fan service into this game as well is is obviously helping um people i've been sharing on twitter like with velma like when you like crawl yeah i saw uh, yeah 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 the screen goes blurry i'm like that's gonna fuck with people's <laughs> eyes like actually like people are, people are gonna get glasses from this game like 100 um but i, I mean i yeah. kind of do like the flavor again i'm not like a huge competitive smash guy but i, and mm-hmm. I always appreciate when smash kind of emulate the game the character is supposed to be in and this is really doing the same thing just with, with all these other properties. Like it seems like all these, like Tom and Jerry, they're just fighting each other, and then like that—that's how they do damage to like other people. I think that's really cute, and like mm-hmm. I, it really fits their character in general. So, um, yeah, I, I I think that's really important, and like in like one of these like platform fighters, like you, you have to have like a lot of personality. And, like, the characters have to feel like these characters, else what's the point, right? So, yeah. um, And I think that's the problem with Nickelodeon All-Stars, where these characters are just mute, like, punching bags, and, like, you just don't (laughs) care as much. (laughs) So, um, yeah, I I do think, hopefully this game does do well, and it's not too, like, uh, monetized, like, badly, like, because I think that would, like, get a lot of people to just not bother with it, even Mm -hmm. if it is free to play. So, yeah, we, we definitely have to see a lot more from this game, but from what they're showing right now, it looks pretty good, so... Yeah, and it's in uh, I I, th- I think like closed beta right now. So like there's yeah. like some streamers playing it, you know, some Smash players. I think I saw Mango playing it. So yeah, you know, I think that this game has potential. Obviously, like I feel like most platform fighters give them a year. If they're still around, then they're good. You know, yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, basically, yeah. Um, because like most of them sort of like burn out and, and die out and, and stuff. But um, 
Yeah, I mean, I guess since we're talking about Nickelodeon All Star, I, I I guess I'll bring this story up. Uh, let me just bring it up. Yeah. So uh, yeah, they they announced that uh, Jenny, uh, Hugh, and Rocco is uh, coming to the game. Uh, so that is pretty exciting. I love my life as a teenage robot. I yep. thought that that show is really really fun to watch. I just love the sort of like premise of it of having like this fucking robot that's like a teenager trying to you know live like a normal everyday high schooler i guess uh so yeah you know that was a fun show and i'm glad that she's she's in the game and has has a move set that i'm very very like familiar with from the show and then have a q neutron yeah I think the meme that, character yeah. yeah that was that was just you know the meme character they're like all right guys i guess i guess if we're doing dlc we'll put Hugh in there and then got, the last Jimmy, one was a uh, rocco yeah jimmy's not even there it's just yeah Hugh <laughs> <laughs> but um Fuck yeah I mean, I, i'm excited for this um i mean i don't even have the game but like having xj9 there that, that's really sick i, I also yeah. love my life as a teenage robot as a kid like that shit was sick <laughs> i love that show so yeah it's really cool that she's in there you know her moveset would just make sense i mean she's like a fighting robot like <laughs> it, it sounds pretty mm-hmm. easy to just make a moveset for her hugh neutron you know meme character that's gonna be cool to see i know people really wanted him i mean i love hugh neutron in the show so that's gonna be fun to see and rocco you know more uh, i guess classic nicktoon represent i mean i guess the all classic of this point because they're all mm-hmm. old now which makes me feel old but yeah, yeah rocco, we're getting old yeah rocco more for like more 90s 90s like representation which is nice as well so um i don't know how many more characters are gonna add um like i hopefully I, I don't even know who else i mean i guess like there's like no fairy odd parent representation which is kind of weird i know there's danny phantom but that's like yeah. not <laughs> it's not the same yeah <laughs> so it's kind of weird like there's no cosmo wanda or like timmy or anything um mm-hmm. so yeah I, I think there's like a ton of more things to add to the game but um uh, really, the only thing they really need is just more polish for the game. I, I would like to just see a sequel at this point. Maybe they could just take what they have, make the game even more polished. I mean, I think the game sold pretty well. So they'd be like, hey, Nickelodeon, give us more money. Let's mm-hmm. add voice acting, make the game more polished, add more game modes, like improve the online. And I uh, honestly think you'll have a really good game there. So, um, but I'm, I'm happy to see the game still gain support. And because it was fun uh, when I played it over at your house, you know, it was a fun game. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, it is it is literally just a uh, a, a, a Smash Bros. clone, you know? So yeah. um, you can't really go wrong with that. But yeah, I'm glad that they are adding characters and still supporting the game to those people that are still enjoying it and playing it. So um, yeah, we'll just we'll just see on how, how much of this support can actually bring people back. I'm sure when Hugh, Hugh fucking comes out, people are, are going to make like combo videos and dumbass shit on Twitter. So. Yeah, Hugh, Hugh infinite combo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess you'll do the next thing because that's yeah. Bethesda. That's not my territory. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so Redfall, which is the new Arcane game, the people that made Dishonored and like um, what was it, Death Loop and stuff, mm-hmm. and Starfield, which obviously is Bethesda's next new big game, have been pushed back to 2023. So um, it, it's actually funny because apparently uh, Todd Howard, you know, main boy at Bethesda, you know, he's a good liar. He was like, oh, <laughs> Star- Starfield would definitely be ready by like November of this year, and then guess what? It wasn't. <laughs> so um, whoops. Uh, but yeah, it, honestly, uh, Redfall doesn't surprise me because it really didn't show a lot about that game anyway. It was kind of just the one CG trailer and then that's it. So yeah, Redfall, I was like, okay, that, that, that's definitely not going to happen. And then that didn't surprise me. It got delayed. Starfield was a little more iffy because um, uh, Bethesda usually doesn't like to share too many details until the game is actually going to be out. Like, they did the same thing with Fallout 4 when that came out when it was just like, like they did the whole release thing to show the first trailer for it and gameplay. And it's always going to come out like that November. Um, yeah. Which is pretty cool. Uh, so I was kind of expecting the same thing with Starfield. Obviously, they showed it way earlier than they did uh, Fallout 4, but I was expecting like sort of like a big showcase by now, by like June or something, like E3 time, uh, for them to really show all the features and what's coming out. And then like, yeah, it's coming out like November. So that one kind of surprises me a little bit more, mostly because Microsoft has like nothing now, right? Because um, mm-hmm. Microsoft is sort of like banking on these big games to, to like sell more Series Xs. Uh, and now with both of them delayed, I don't think Xbox has really anything for the holiday season. And, um, you know, that kind of sucks for them. But what are you going to do? Like, um, you know, it took a while for PlayStation and Sony to start to get their wheels, tur- especially Sony, to get their wheels turning and have these games come out at a nice regular pace. Uh, you know, Microsoft just bought all these new studios. So, yeah, it's going to take a bit for, like, these companies to start to pump out these games, like, at a nice even pace, like PlayStation. Um, so I, I like I still don't think the Series X is like Xbox's generation. I think next generation will be a better year or sort of a back a bit a better generation for Xbox. 
Um, but yeah, definitely this delay hurts Microsoft a lot. And for anyone that was looking forward to Starfield, I need to see more. I really didn't like Fallout 4, and I got sucked into <laughs> that game. Uh, that was like the only time I felt like pretty ripped off of a game I bought at launch. Usually I'm pretty good at gauging that stuff, but that Todd Howard got me. He was like, look all the cool things you could do. <laughs> and I just finished New Vegas, so I'm like, yeah, I'll play Fallout 4, and I didn't like it. So um, yeah, hopefully Starfield is better. Um, but um, you know, the delay, you know, I. Delays is such a mixed thing now because like, it, it could either be good or it could be science that the game is not doing so well. So hopefully it's like, you know, doing well and they just need more time. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that them getting ahead of E3 and delaying it now instead of being like, hey, where's Starfield at E3? They're like, ah, shit. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. We don't got anything. Um, but yeah, you know, delays, like you said, uh, you know, sort of like a double-edged sword. You never know if it's a good or bad thing, but Hopefully they're trucking along because, you know, like you said, Todd Howard is an amazing liar. So, yeah, he is. <laughs> um, but on the Microsoft front, you know, them being like buying all of these studios and them like poking at them like, hey, do something. Please, please, <laughs> yeah. please, please, please make some games. And then and they're like, hey, yeah, uh, we're going to have to delay it. Look how buggy this shit is. Oh, fuck. All right. Well, I guess we got to delay it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, it is what it is. I'm not really looking forward to either of these games. Uh, if they, you know, come out and people are fucking praising about it, all right, then I'll look at them. But, you know, right now I'm, you know, I've never been a big Bethesda gamer, so. That's fair. I mean, I really only liked New Vegas and I wasn't even really made by them <laughs> to begin mm. with, so. But yeah. All right. So moving on, we got uh, some, uh, I guess, some, some political news. Spicy. Uh, so, yeah, uh, the... Uh, PlayStation Baj, Jim Ryan, uh, he said, respect differences on opinion on abortion rights in an email. Uh, then he said some other bullshit in that email about like his dogs or whatever f- filler things he said in that email. Um, but it was, uh, yeah. cats, actually. Yeah, <laughs> I, fucking hell. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, like, I think that there's a pretty clear side uh, on this debate. You know, I think that pro lifers are framing it that way because you, the. T- they're not looking at the other side of you're taking the rights of these women and these people that, you know, they've had this right for years and years. And now it's like suddenly Roe v. Wade got overturned in the Supreme Court. And now fucking states are sort of, you know, on an individual basis of, you know, picking and choosing whether or not they want to ban abortions or not. So now it's it's very scary being a fucking female, you know, as a, as a two guys on this show, you yeah. know, we can't really say for ourselves, but, um, you know, pr- Pro choice. I've always, I've always been pro choice. I will never forget um, senior year in band class. It was like first period. It was like a fucking quiet sort of like uh, no one was saying anything. And then one of the uh, um, uh, trumper, trumpet, trump, fucking trump players. Right. Anyways, uh, he was like, so uh, who's for abortion? And then like all of the fucking trumpets raised their hand. And then here I am, French horn, just like raise my hand because <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you know, like obviously like that's a funny joke, but also at the same time pro-choice. You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's like fair. I mean, I'm also pro-choice because it's like, why, why would it be? <laughs> like, I, I, I feel like it's not really my, my say on like what they should do with your own body, you know? Like, yeah. That should be their own choice and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um. And, you know, I think Jim Ryan sort of, like... I feel like if he wasn't... I don't know why he even said anything at that point. Like, yeah. If he was just going to make it worse, like, just, like, let it lie. But he's just like, oh, just respect both opinions. And then he just talked about his cats. And <laughs> in the uh, in the article, it's like, like a lot of the female employees got uh, rightfully upset. And it just kind of feels like he was kind of trivializing the whole issue just by saying something like that. Which I do agree. Like, you don't bring up that topic out of nowhere and just be like, it doesn't matter. Here, look at my cats and make you feel better. I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I definitely think that's, like, an issue that should be settled by, like, women and, like, that's their own body and stuff. Like, I, I don't know. I don't really have a right to say anything about that. I mean, everyone should be oh, in charge yeah. of their own body. Like, it's, it's yours. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I mean, like, men shouldn't make laws about women, but that's that's uh, that's another topic. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's true. Like, we shouldn't, like... Yeah. I don't really know why that would be a thing we would even dictate on. Like, I don't, I, I can't say anything about it because I'm a guy. Like, I feel like that's your own vibe. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, uh, Insomniac Games, they like donated to like, uh, you know, support this. And uh, apparently Sony matched the donation. I can't, I can't find the fucking article that I saw on Twitter, a random ass tweet could be true could be not so i'm trying to find it but um you know w common w for insomnia games as usual you know oh yeah dude this is why i love them (laughs) (laughs) they're my favorites so yeah but pick them good (laughs) fucking jim ryan what the fuck yeah 
Well, now let's talk about. <laughs> <laughs> More like let's talk about the bean fucking the, the platformer. Bean people. All right. Uh, so yeah, Fall Guys uh, is going free to play. It's multi platform and cross play. Uh, so it's going to be on everything now. I, I totally forgot it wasn't on anything. It was, I think it was only on PlayStation and PC before. So now it's going to yeah. be on Switch and Xbox and it's going to be on Epic Game Store. But I think it got taken away from Steam. I'm going to check because I remember my brother told me that. And I don't know. I, I mean, yeah. I have it on Steam. So it's probably still going to show up. I mean, it's still here. Yeah. Um, so the thing that's going on is that if you want to play play it now for free, you have to download it on the Epic Game Store. I, I think that Steam is not allowing it allowing it to be free or some shit. I don't know. Maybe maybe fucking Fall Guys kind of check with Epic Games, you know, like get more downloads, get more people. Oh, yeah. that's probably why. Yeah, okay, Epic, then. Yeah, Epic bought them. So, like, that's why they I mean, they did the same thing with Rocket League where yeah. I think you can play it through Steam, but it just opens Epic anyway, so you have to use it. Or, yeah, yeah, use Epic anyway. Um, I mean... I don't know. Like I, I don't. I, people are really upset. Like people get really mad about stuff like that. I don't really care. It's not as much of a deal for me if I didn't use one launcher or another. It's kind of just inconvenient, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, I just download another thing. Like it's fine. I never really got the anger towards like other launchers unless they're like really really bad. And Epic is okay. Like they're not like the best launcher ever, but they're like it, it's serviceable. Like Origin and UPlay always had way more issues with. Um, but yeah, now it's gonna be on everything. So that's good if you never played Fall Guys before. I mean, I I really enjoy Fall Guys. I think it's a good time. Um, yeah, and hopefully this brings more life into the game because I know it was kind of I don't know if it was dying necessarily, but it was like not as successful after like Among Us got like way more popular like at the same time. And I know yeah. they're not the same game at all, but like it's, it was sort of like the zeitgeist of like what the new meme popular game is. So, um, and I just prefer Fall Guys more anyway because I I just think it's fun. So um yeah, I, I think it'll be a good time. You know, if you want to play on Switch now, you can. So there you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think uh, the reason why uh, Fall Guys burned out so quick was because they didn't necessarily capitalize on the success of it so fast. Like, how could how could they fucking predict it? You know, like yeah. I, I they think really it, had no idea. Yeah, I mean, they were a small team and they didn't know it was going to get that popular. And you know, you can't pump out content like that with such a small team. You know, so when people were asking for new content, more seasonal stuff. They're just like, well, what, what do you want us to do? <laughs> we're a small indie team. <laughs> so I know we're, still, I, we're still trying to figure out the survey stuff. <laughs> yeah, just still trying to figure out all the other stuff that's been happening. So I think now is a good time to get into Fall Guys. I think they're renaming the season to just be season one now. So mm. yeah, it's, it's a perfect time if you really want to play that ser- uh, game to go back. I might play a little bit because it's a fun game. So And it did a lot of other reworks for stuff, but I really know the specifics. But um yeah it's a good time if you like uh basically a platforming battle royale game then go ahead it's a good time yeah it's free to play um i think cross play is a big thing i think that that should be like a common thing in games these days because like i will i will still never forget the fucking struggle back then it's like all right what do you got an xbox or a playstation it's like ah shit we can't play with each other but now it's like oh shit you know what do you play apex if you play apex then we can play together you know yeah um but yeah, it's it's very cool to see like cross platform become a thing and sort of more common. So I'm glad that Fall Guys is making that move at the same time making it free to play on all of the other platforms because you know it's been so long since you know we've it, it's it's been announced Fall Guys was coming to fucking Switch and then it, it never came out and, and now here we are. So um, yeah, you know Fall Guys is a great game. I think that people that are upset that they paid for it should realize that they were able to play it for like two years. You know without. Yeah. You know, having to worry about uh, whatever else. So, but hey, you know, now that it's free to play and crossplay, now there's going to be a lot more people people playing the game. So, uh, yeah, should be should be easy to get into games. Q time shouldn't be that long. They weren't even that long to begin with, uh, depending really. on the uh, the uh, game mode that you picked and shit like that. But yeah, you know, Fall Guys still cool that it's still around. It's you know still you know sort of a unique battle royale game in and of itself. So. Yeah, I think it would do better being free to play. I think it should have been free to play from the, like probably like a year ago, but I'm happy they're finally doing it now. So yeah, now that they got the money and resources and shit like that. Ba- so. Basically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, first look at Marvel's Echo is pretty much just a fucking screenshot. Yeah. Of uh, what's the her lady name? from Hawkeye? Yeah, I yeah. think her name's Echo. I forget. Fuck. You know, I like I love Hawkeye the show, but you know that sort of side story with them and you know them bringing in the Kingpin. You know, like. Honestly, I forget. There's it's too much MCU shit to fucking remember these days. But uh, yeah, you know, hopefully, hopefully it's good. Um, I think that um, 
apparently we're supposed to get the defenders in this series like this is how the defenders are supposed to come into like the the mcu and sort of reintroduce in a sense so hopefully that happens in the show and uh not like it takes over the show necessarily but i wouldn't mind if it did you know what i'm saying uh but you know as long as it's a uh part of the show you know maybe we see daredevil and maybe at the finale or he plays a key role within the season but you know it is coming next year so you know the the fucking mcu train ain't stopping it ain't stopping boys i mean like once disney uh launched disney plus you know they didn't really have too much content until mandalorian came out but ever since like uh wandavision came out they've just been like on their like just uh, pumping content nonstop. like (laughs) once one show ends another one comes in another one i mean it's smart like i mean it gets me like it's probably the streaming service i use the most uh i guess besides Mm -hmm. like like crunchyroll right but like yeah but yeah that's like they they know how to pump out the content. It's not like like uh, Netflix where it's just like oh here's a good thing every like six months or something you know. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I definitely think uh, Disney is doing like the smart thing by pumping this out. But again, we feel more fatigued because it's mostly going to be Marvel or Star Wars stuff. You can't really do much else, right? Like yeah, uh, animation takes a lot more effort and stuff. So it's not, you don't really see too many animated weekly things. I think to just show like a Baymax thing or something yeah. like that that's going to be happening. So that's cool. But yeah, I think having a little more variety besides Marvel and Star Wars would be kind of nice. Um, but yeah, um, I mean, I guess they're not complaining because they're making a shit ton of money. So, and we're gonna keep watching it anyway because <laughs> we're freaking shows. So, ah, shit, you got yeah. us. Um, so. so, you want to talk about She Hulk? Yeah, we'll talk about She Hulk. So, yeah, She Hulk came out or the fucking the trailer for it, and um, I mean. For the most part, again, it looks very different from anything else we've seen so far. It looks a lot more like like Sex in the City, I guess. Like a lot more like comedic. Yeah, sort of like a uh, yeah, like sitcom kind of. Yeah, thing. like sitcomy sort of. But you know, she she's she Hulk, and uh, I really I, I think the trailer was like fine. You know, it looks like a fun show or whatever. But I think the thing that's really gaining a lot of attention is her Hulk form and her CG. And yeah, I think this is probably some of the weakest CG I've seen in a MCU thing in a while. Like it looks not great. <laughs> like a lot of the CGI and Moon Knight looked a little weird, but I was able to look kind of past it. Cause I'm like, yeah, it looks fine. It just looks really out of place. Um, mm-hmm. She Hulk, I think kind of just looks kind of bad. If I'm going to be honest, like her face looks weird, just the way she looks. I'm hoping it's, it's like they could finalize it a bit more. Uh, cause when she's standing right next to Hulk or Mark Ruffalo in Hulk form, like, he still looks fine, probably because it's just the same rig from Infinity War or whatever. So, we just, like, take that model and just use it. And he looks great mm-hmm. still. And standing right next to She-Hulk, she's like, ooh, yeah, she definitely looks a lot crustier than he does. So, um, hopefully, going to touch up the CGI before the show actually comes out because it does seem a little distracting. But um, besides that, the show looks funny. Like, it looks like it's going to be a fun time. Hopefully, it's not something that's, like, not focused too much on combat or action or whatever. Like, it's just focused on being a funny show, I guess. Um, I mean, that's really all you can ask for at this point. So... Um, hopefully it comes out good because again we're gonna watch it anyway so i mean yeah i think uh marvel and disney's obsession with just like covering everything with cg is just so fucking annoying like i don't know why they didn't just like yeah you could just get her up in makeup Yeah, Yeah. yeah yeah exactly just like you know paint her green give her a wig you know go from there i guess it's because she like you know gets taller and gets you know that stuff uh bigger more muscular right. uh, apparently she was supposed to be more muscular than what we see in the trailer which is a little disappointing you know i wish that you know they they would have uh you know not have i guess not to get political anyways um <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean like like the cg looks shoddy what can i fucking say yeah. you know when you have these artists and these teams just constantly pumping out this mcu shit and they're on a fucking deadline it's like all right shit like all right, it looks good enough. Like, fine, whatever, right. you know, kind of thing. So it does suck that the the uh, the show's qualities are, are just getting lower and lower visually just because of that. I wish that they would just take their time more and just, like, you know, give give these people a fucking work work life balance a little bit you know i can i can wait a month without a, without another weekly mcu show you know like yeah uh we just finished moon knight and i think uh when does when does fucking miss marvel come out fucking is that kind of like the same week as kenobi or something it comes out kenobi comes out next week um right. and then after that june 8th is apparently miss marvel oh, okay. so i think i think those two shows are going to be happening simultaneously oh, God. Or something. <laughs> yeah that's going to be a that's going to be a, 
a little annoying. Yeah, get ready for a long podcast. <laughs> you know, <that's> gonna <laughs> take a while. We're gonna be talking a lot, but yeah, um, yeah, you know, like I hope the show's still good. Uh, visually, it's gonna be a little distracting, especially since because like people pointed out because it's fucking obvious this shit's on Disney Plus. Fucking Marvel's owned by Disney. What the fuck are they doing? Put more money in, like just hire more people or like, give them more time. Whatever the case is, like there's there there should not be a world where you know we have these shows and they are looking like this. You right. know? Yeah, because I was actually like so impressed when I saw WandaVision. And, like, how good it looks. I'm like, wow, this looks like just, like, a movie, just, like, segmented, mm-hmm. basically. And uh, same thing with Loki. I'm like, wow, this looks really good for, like, a, like a TV show. Like, wow. Um, and even, like, Mandalorian and stuff. And then, like, that quality has been really going down, visually, anyway. Like, it's been really going down. Um, and this seems to be, like, the ultimate, like, ooh, they, they should really take a second pass at the CGI. So, um, mm-hmm. I hope that they can fix that. I mean, they have a shit ton of money. Like, come on, Disney. Just pump more, <laughs> either put more money into it or delay it and, like, let them work on the CGI some more. Because I know it's not all about money. You need the time as well. So, yeah, hopefully yeah. they can fix it up before it release. But, yeah, right now the CGI does look pretty shoddy. So, but hopefully that's not what the, the show is really focused on. Hopefully it's just focused more on her character and stuff. Then I won't really care. But, yeah, we're going to wait and see when we actually see the show for ourselves. Yeah, and I like that uh, they're bringing in, obviously, like, Hulk, you know, <laughs> the way he is in the MCU is very different from any other fucking iteration of the character. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, seeing Tim Roth again, uh, back as the Abomination, but now yeah. he's in, like, a fucking cage, you know. Uh, guys, the Incredible Hulk's canon. Yeah, it's always been canon. It's just that, you know, they replaced Edward Norton with uh, Mark Ruffalo, and, you know, they went from there and shit. Um, but... Yeah, uh, and the reason why they're using the Hulk in these formats is because they can't make a fucking Hulk movie without Universal in there. So, right. <laughs> yeah, legal stuff, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, yeah, you know, I'm excited because I've always liked Hulk. You know, this this MCU version of him, you know, I'm kind of over it. You know, it was it was funny and goofy when, you know, we saw him in Endgame and sort of, you know, how, how he changed and how he's, like, he's one with the Hulk and shit like that. So I wonder on how this sort of, like, mentorship uh, that uh, the Hulk is going to have on She-Hulk, so. It's good good times. So I guess <laughs> more Disney Plus stuff because, yeah. Uh, we got Daredevil. It's apparently in the works for a Disney Plus show. Um, and I think that's about all the information we got. Like, we don't really know much else. Let me yeah, see. Yeah, uh, I believe we know who's writing it, which is no one from... Uh, the original team it's uh, Matt Corman and Chris Ord um, and I don't know what their previous works were but it's just nowhere near Daredevil um, let me see if I could if I can find it in the article or something else but apparently uh, this is going to be a sort of soft reboot of the Netflix Daredevil series uh, so my hope is that they don't fuck it up but <laughs> I know they will uh, just because you know we've seen how many Disney Plus shows have we had so far? We've had WandaVision, Falcon, Loki, um, Moon Knight, Hawkeye. That's uh, five, right? Yeah, five. Right? Five. Am I missing one? It should be five. Anyways, I think it's five. we've had we've had five. Okay, so like, and we're gonna have more by the by the time we even see this fucking Daredevil show. You know, we're gonna have She Hulk. We're gonna have Miss Marvel. You know, and God damn, they. They, they can't fuck this up. Please, God. Please, please, God. You know, like, people people that are expecting Netflix Daredevil to return on Disney+, Plus, that's just not going to happen. Yeah. I feel like that that's not going to happen unless they want it to. And here's 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 where I go from here. Okay, so the Netflix shows are now living on Disney+. Plus, So, yeah. obviously, like, they're okay with that sort of, like, M-rated content. But... We don't know if they're going to, you know, fully go all in with that because we haven't really seen it yet. Like, they could have done it with Moon Knight. Like, they could have done it. They could have, you know, went full sort of like TVMA and, you know, yeah. went with more blood, more gore. And, you know, if if they wanted to, if it serviced the story, you know, I'm not fucking here just to see that just for the sake of it, you know. Um, but when it happened in Daredevil, it obviously played a huge part within the story, which we'll hopefully see soon enough, Damien, when you fucking yeah. watch it. I know, um, really watch it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know... Um, I, I am holding my breath very much so, like with most uh, Netflix Daredevil enthusiasts, I feel like that. Uh, seeing Charlie seeing Charlie Cox in the role again is gonna be fucking great. But how they do it, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to wait and see, honestly. So Yeah, um I I'm really gonna have to like watch like the show at this point. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, soft reboot didn't surprise me, right? Because it's like, oh, they're probably just gonna reboot it and stuff. So hopefully it doesn't like lose what made it special to begin with. Um 
and like they're able to still keep that same magic what people what people really liked about the show and stuff because if they change it too much you know people are just gonna alienate the new fan or the old fans and it may not even appeal to like newer fans if it's like you know too neutered i guess because of disney um i mean we've seen disney like it looks like they're getting more open to doing a little more mature content like i know they're doing the new daredevil or and i think it's supposed to be our and um, obviously, Doctor Strange was pretty violent in and of itself. It wasn't art, but it could have been at this point. So um, mm-hmm. hopefully, they're more like keen to being a little more violent if the story like needs it. Like some characters are just gonna be more brutal than others. You know, it's just kind of just how it works. So not everyone could just be like, you know, punch someone and that's it. You know, so um, hopefully they're able to like do the show justice and not like sort of neuter it too much um, as they make this new like sort of soft reboot. So. Um, yeah, they're probably just gonna service it to make it like fit the MCU more now. But yeah, ho- hopefully it doesn't like like destroy too much goodwill from everyone, you know. So that's all you can really hope for. Uh, yeah, and the people that they got uh, writing and executive producing, uh, I-, I looked at Matt's IMDb. It seems like he has a lot of experience within TV, so that's good. But nowhere near what Daredevil is. Uh, they did the Brave and uh, Containment. And I don't know what the fuck those shows are. Um, but, hey, you know, uh, we'll just wait and see. Hopefully hopefully they're able to, uh, you know, deliver on fans' expectations. Because uh, they are very, very high. Because uh, they literally could have just got the Netflix team, probably. And they would have been very, very happy to return and work on this character. Because when you watch the show, you can tell that they very much love Matt uh, as a character and they want to see him grow and sort of see Charlie Cox in that role and shit like that. So, you know, uh, there's definitely a lot riding on this because, you know, a lot of the, uh, Marvel shows, you know, in general have not been all that great. You know, they've been good, but they haven't been like sort of blow out amazing other than I guess a few standouts for some people, especially Loki. Yeah. All right. So now, uh, well, I guess we should put like a not really a spoiler warning, but we're gonna kind of spoil because they. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, look! They released the first eight minutes. So. Yeah. So the first eight minutes of Stranger Things four uh, was released on Twitter. You know, by by them. It's not wasn't like leaked or anything. And yeah. we kind of got like how uh, it's gonna be structured. So volume one is gonna be releasing May twenty seventh, right? And it's gonna have seven episodes. Um, episode seven in particular is gonna be an hour and thirty eight minutes, and then volume two is gonna come out in July. Uh, July 1st, and the um, episode 8 and 9, you know, the, there's only two episodes left. Uh, episode 8 is going to be an hour and 25 minutes, and then episode 9 is going to be two hours and 30 minutes, so we're getting a whole freaking movie by the end of the, <laughs> the end of this thing. Um, so yeah, that, that's pretty crazy. Um, and hopefully this really does give them enough, I mean, I, I want to see how they don't have enough time to wrap everything up at this point, but uh, hopefully this gives them enough time to wrap everything up, give the series a nice end and stuff. Like, I mean, I love this. Like, I love that they're really giving them enough creative like control to be like okay we're gonna need like a whole movie to end this by the end of it and i think that's it's gonna be crazy i think like there's no way this show yeah. doesn't end like insane um and i guess we get our, like the first eight minutes are already pretty insane by itself um we see like yeah like eleven's like dad guy like sort of like doing all the different things with the other number people and mm-hmm. um you know they're sort of like I guess following up on I don't know if you're really gonna follow up with the whole number thing. I know people hated that part and um <laughs> but I, I I didn't even I didn't mind that part as much as other people. I thought it was just fine. Uh I, people hated yeah. that though, so I don't think they're gonna like, do anything with that. But um <laughs> but yeah, anyway, they're like doing all that stuff and then some something's happening and then eleven looks like she like killed them all, but probably not. I don't know what's going yeah. on. So yeah. <laughs> It's probably framed that way, so we think that. It's like, oh my god, Eleven's a bad guy. Yeah. Anyways, um, if you need to get excited for Stranger Things again, uh, watch these eight minutes. It is it is great. Um, the way that they use sound, the way that it visually looks, like it feels like Stranger Things again. And mm. I think that some people need to get excited for Stranger Things again, including myself. I honestly needed to watch these eight minutes to be like, okay, yeah, like now I'm excited for this shit. Uh, and the fact that it's coming out next week. Holy yeah. Shit. That's crazy. Yeah, there's gonna be oh a lot. Oh my of, lord! There's gonna be a lot of shit. Uh, that's gonna be. That's gonna be crazy. Okay, okay. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm definitely gonna try to not work that much uh, going into <laughs> the following. Week. But anyways, um, yeah, I mean, like Stranger Things. Uh, this first eight minutes definitely felt like a return to form in a sense. Um, 
you know, not to say that like seasons two and three were bad. Like I, I, I honestly really like season three just because it was sort of like, you know, them like over three. summer break and, you know, them doing whatever the fuck they wanted. Um, and then, you know, season two, the reason people didn't like the whole number thing was because right before the, the, the sort of like, I guess like climactic thing, they did the whole like uh, 11 backstory episode and, and, and that was a whole ass episode. So um, I can see why people didn't like it, you know, because it does like break the pace up of, of the show like pretty bad. It does. But, I just feel you know. like it's, it's like a Netflix show, so it's like it, it's not like I yeah. wait a whole week at least. So like I, that's mm-hmm. why I probably didn't mind as much. But yeah, but the way that they're structuring this sort of like volume one, volume two thing, is kind of crazy because I, you know, we, I'm pretty sure everyone assumed that it was gonna be the first half and then the second half. Yeah. Instead, here's the first seven and then the last two, which in total is like what is that four hours of content? Yeah. Holy shit! But how much you is know? a regular episode supposed to be? Forty minutes or an hour? Yeah, probably something like that. So like. First, you get seven hours, and then from May 27th to um, July 1st, which is less than a week, you get you get less than a week to watch all seven episodes, and then when July 1st hits, you need to watch all four hours before you go on Twitter and get spoiled. Wait, is this releasing weekly, or is this... No, no, no. no. no so like binge, all, right? Yeah, yeah, all seven episodes are yeah. dropping okay. that May 27th, and then right. the last two are dropping less than a week from that date. Oh, I see, yeah. So that that's a lot of binging. <laughs> that's 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 a lot of time that people are, are gonna have to commit. People are gonna call out of work. It's gonna be bad. Um, yeah, I think that it is. It is kind of crazy that the last episode is like, first off, two hours, and then on top of that, it's two hours and thirty. So like, we are in for a long ass episode, and I wonder how they're gonna actually wrap everything up because. You know, this is this is the end all be all. There's not going to be any more Stranger Things after this, which I am very happy for. But I wonder how they're actually going to finish it because I think originally they wanted they wanted to do Stranger Things one through three, and then that was it. But they were like, "Fuck, this is making a lot of money, so fuck it." <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad they actually are ending it because I, I you know yeah. I don't like when things go on for way too long, and you know I feel like Stranger Things were I kind of losing steam. Most of it wasn't really even their fault. Like, I think COVID really fucked with them, you know, obviously. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. like, it wasn't really their fault to begin with. Because I remember we, we were seeing them doing their production stuff, like, in 2019, I think, or something. And then, yeah, COVID happened, kind of threw a wrench and everything. So, um, I'm happy they're finally being able to do all the season four. Uh, it'll be the end of Stranger Things. And I'm excited for it. Because, you know, I love Stranger Things. It's a great series. And I, I'm hoping it ends well. <laughs> and that's all I can really hope for. <laughs> yeah, you know, TV shows are ending well. Uh, it's kind yeah, of... Yeah, it's kind of a theme, yeah. <laughs> kind of common. But um, I am I have faith that they're going to land on their feet. But uh, last story we had here is kind of random. Um, I saw stories about this, <laughs> but I thought it was fake. But it's actually true because the movie's on Disney+. Plus, So people are just clipping it and shit. But uh, Ugly Sonic is actually in the fucking uh, Chippendale movie. Yep. So this shit's kind of funny just because, like, I think that the movie sort of uh, plays on, you know, the whole, like, CG characters and 2D characters and also, like, acting like these these characters are, like, actual, like, actors in a sense. So, like, you know, when they, like, redo the Sonic model, they just got another actor, if you will. So I like that they're sort of playing into that aspect. Um, obviously, this version of Sonic is still fucking ugly. Yeah. I think that they made him extra ugly by by adding, like, Give the fucking... Beer belly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the the, 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 uh, the uh, gut and sort of, like, emphasizing, like, his teeth and, you know, I got canceled on the internet. They got one look at me and shit like that, you know? Um, <laughs> Yeah, honestly, I really, really like this clip uh, that we got. I'm honestly kind of interested just to like watch the movie now I mean, because I of watch this it clip. It, look, it looks like a shit post. So I really yeah. want to watch. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a fun time. I'll be honest. Um, I don't know much about Chippendale Rescue Rangers or anything like that, but just this, just this one Sonic cameo, which like I don't even know how this like legally possible or, or how it legally happened. Uh, even even if you know they're gonna you know get sued or some shit, I don't know because like there's there's no association with Sega or Paramount on this cameo. So yeah, I don't know how they they were like okay with this, but I guess maybe Sonic Two did so well, like yeah, fuck it, like, like <laughs> I don't know. but yeah, I kind of it, it's it's just so crazy to see this get acknowledged. Like mm-hmm. it, it's great. I, I think they have a good sense of humor to like allow this to even happen and stuff. So 
Uh, I love it. Yeah, I, this Trevor Neal movie just looks like a giant shit post on it. I, I actually really want to see it. <laughs> so, I mean, it's on Disney Plus, so. I, I, do you have pay for it? I think I pay for it. Right? Uh, I don't think so. I, I literally uh, clicked on it and I didn't hit play, but I think you don't have to pay for uh, it. Pog. All right. Which is why so many people are just clipping this shit and just putting it on Twitter. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will make some time for that because it does look funny. <laughs> <laughs> it does look really, really good. But um, yeah, is there anything else you'd like to add, Gutsa? No, I think that's everything. All right, so thank you guys for listening to the Travis and Damien podcast. Once again, uh, I was featured on the Jimmy on podcast, episode 26, so if you guys want to listen to that and get more backstory on myself and my journey on YouTube and shit like that. But um, yeah, thank you guys for watching this episode once again. We will see you guys two weeks from now with another episode. Later.